And we're in! I think, successful! Hello, hi, hi, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, that should be better, sorry. <laughs> I gotta figure out what the heck the dealio is with this software thingamajigabob. And that, that too, yep. Hi, how's it going? How's, uh, how's, how's all the peoples? This is, this is kind of loud for me. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I am still getting situated, and if you hear some weird noises in the background, it's because my dogs have bones and they're just going to town on them. So, yeah! How's everybody's Friday? Little, li little mermaid? What? Where did that come from? <laughs> Especially crisp, like in a good way or like in a bad way. No, my sword. Fury. <laughs> I can't see. Also, this why is this still so loud? Hi. Quit following me. Uh, this is still super loud. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. There we go. That's better. That's better. I'm good now. Hi, Kaza Cooper. Thanks for the month. First month. Yay. Did I see the... Okay, guys, no leaks in chat, all right? I know that Al Haytham's kit and everything's on YouTube. I know it's on Reddit. I know it's on Discord. None of that tonight, all right? You can talk drip. Drip marketing's fine. Uh, none of that, none of the league stuff, okay? Nuns of that. Yeah, I know, it was super fast this time. Last time we had to wait like a week. This time it's just like, nope. Just instant. Mine. Mwah. I just like running around. Damie, thanks for the super chat. Why did no one acknowledge the fact that Skarmouche just got a vision? Not even Skarmouche himself. I mean, he kind of did and he grabbed it. But the thing is, like... Skara probably knows a whole lot more about vision requirements... ...than any of us. Because, <laughs> like... He wasn't surprised by it. It was like he was basically expecting it. And if you read his... I don't know. Can I read his line? I read his lines on Amber. I didn't read them in here. Uh, oh, you can read the Vision one. Although the idea of divine favor... This one. Ill. I'm not going to be picky about a new source of power. So... It just feels like he knows more than we do. Like, he knows way more than we do about, like, like, like... ...what constitutes a vision. But that would make sense, right? Because, like, the Fatui in general... ...the Fatui in general would... ...probably know more about visions anyway, just because, like... I mean, they made delusions, right? And to make a delusion, you must have to understand visions. At least, I would assume that's the case. If it's not the case, then that's kind of weird. The wind rises. Yeah. Kong, thanks for the super chats! I appreciate it. Uh, Alice narrated Scar. Is Alice a descender confirmed? I don't think that's the case. Um... I mean, there. okay, so there's a distinct possibility that Alice is a Descender. I'm not convinced of it. I would say, like, in my head, using only my own logic. <laughs> um, I, for me, she's like 30 to 40 percent chance of Descender. I don't I don't think that's what she is. Because, like, when you think about it, Danesliff isn't a Descender either. And he narrates everybody. And sure, we know that his whole, like, thing is, I am the bow keeper, the keeper of the bows. But 
A, we don't know what that means, and B, we kind of know his backstory, so unless he had a backstory, like he was a descender before he was a royal guard of Conria, which I don't really think would be the case here, um, I don't think that Alice voicing three different trailers for completely unrelated characters puts her in the running for um, being a descender, right? Like I, I think that I think the logic is flawed. Wait, who's targeting me? Oh, hi. Rain outlines your Because okay, so some of you might not remember this. Uh, Alice actually voiced Dory's trailer. Most people just forget. I don't how many people actually watch Dory's trailer to be honest because I feel like so many people were so disappointed with Dory for various reasons that they just didn't bother to watch her stuff but Alice voiced Dory's collected miscellany and she also voiced Aloy so I feel like there are instances where Dane will not voice things and when he doesn't Alice does it instead which just tells me that Alice might have a very similar uh, role or job to whatever it is that Dane's life is doing. You can't run. No, my sword. Behold. Upon the gale. Wum, wum, wum. That'll... Give me my stuff. It's mine now. Anyway... Uh... Pastel, could you explain why you don't like the 2.1 Archon quest A's first story quest? I know you've mentioned it a little bit in some of your videos, so I'm curious why. Uh, uh, I will try to be as succinct as possible. So, the, the biggest reason I didn't like the 2.1 Archon quest is because they completely underutilized Kokomi. And, like, the whole resistance. It feels like they dropped the plot at some point, right? Like, it it, it feel it, it just didn't feel correct. It felt like they they had one writer for two point oh, and then a different writer entirely for two point one, and the second writer like lost the notebook with the first writer's notes in it, <laughs> and so just kind of like was like, uh, let's do something else, and it just didn't work, right? That, that's more or less, like, what it is for me. There's there's a lot of little particulars in it. Um, but, like, the biggest thing is that they just did not use Kokomi. Kokomi, you never actually got to see her, quote-unquote, strategic genius. You got to see her getting duped by the Fatui, and that was kind of it. Right? She shows up once for morale in, in the actual, like, combat. But, like, outside of that, it's just... Yeah. So that was Kokomi. Um, and part of the reason I didn't like the 2.1 quest. I also didn't really like it because, like... I don't... I don't know how many people actually remember this, but Yai actually trained us on how to fight the Shogun. But not the Shogun that you actually fight in the Archon quest. She trained us on how to fight the Shogun puppet. Like, the, the one that you do for the weekly boss quest after you do two of A's story quests to get. Which is, like... A really weird thing to do. You know what I mean? It's just a very strange thing. Can you like there? It's just a very strange thing for her to do. Like, why did she train us in that if like we weren't actually going to fight her? And if we weren't actually gonna like if we were just gonna do power, friendship, warp, and our mind kind of thing. Like, I, that, it, it's little things like that that really bother me. Like, the one that showed military mastermind ended up being Yai and not Kokomi. It, it's little inconsistencies like that that I just, I just had a really hard time with for 2.1. 2.1 had a lot of great scenes, don't get me wrong, they just weren't stitched together well. <laughs> um, and then for A's first story quest, because her second story quest is okay. Um, A's first story quest, I, I think is actually, I, I, when I first played it, I really hated it. And after having to go through it two or three more times, just due to the nature of what I'm doing by, you know, like making videos and stuff, 
Um, I realized kind of what bothered me about it. And it ends up being that I come from the West. And in the West, we have a very particular type of storytelling that we do. Um, things tend to be very uh, obviously spoken. I, uh, how else do I put this? Um, like, okay, so take a look at Ito's story quest, right? People really understood what was happening in Ito's story quest. It was very, very easy to tell what was going on and what the point of it was and, you know, like what the problems were and all, all that kind of stuff was totally fine and made so much sense for Ito. And that's why I think a lot of people really enjoyed his quest, you know? But... If you compare it to A's, Ito's is very, very straightforward, and there's not a whole lot of room for interpretation with it, right? But A's, may, like, if, if you just take it at surface level, things like her being weirded out by books that are fiction, which I'm pretty sure have never changed as we're now discovering that fictional books are kind of like the foundation of to that. Um, her being weirded out by these books and then like, oh, dango, I can just replace my teeth. Like, why am I in the camera? Why am I not here? Like, all, all of those sorts of things make her sound like an airhead, like an absolute airhead. But the problem is, what they were actually going for was they were trying to make her very philosophical. And I think they succeeded in certain languages. Like, if you, if you look at it from, like, an Eastern storytelling philosophy, she makes a lot more sense in that way. But to someone who's been raised on Western sensibilities, she doesn't read the way I think they wanted her to read. She doesn't read, like... A philosopher like she's supposed to you know following me. so that was why i didn't like her first story quest anyway that was that was long that was my, that's my short answer too <laughs> anyway um cast thanks for the super chat we should have gone to sumeru first since not only is the nation not close and right next to leeway but inazuma would be made more sense and been a lot less confusing yeah 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 that's actually my biggest gripe so um having played through sumeru I'm realizing now that you are a thousand percent correct and that we definitely should have too slow. I, I feel like we could have gone to Inazuma and played through like half of it, right? And then realized that we weren't getting anywhere in the war and all that. And then we went back to Liwa and then did the chasm and then went to Sumeru and then did half of Sumeru or even all of Sumeru and then had to go back to Inazuma. Too slow. You know, like, I feel like we should have gone back and forth. I know it sounds Too kind slow. of complicated, but like the, the amount of context that Sumeru provides is like, I, I can't overstate how important it is, just, like, contextually. <laughs> it's just very strange to do it the other way, where they kind of, like, make this tree that gets planted in the past, but technically that tree is an exception and not the rule to how time works into that, and then, like, they give us Enkonomiya and, like, this whole thing about Istaroth and all that. And, and then they send us to Sumeru, but we, we still don't even know about Erminsul. Like, Erminsul isn't even explicitly mentioned, even though it's so core to the entirety of this story, until you get to Sumeru. But, like, half of the shit that happens in Inazuma is all about Erminsul. So, like, it's, it's that kind of stuff that's really irritating. I also feel like... Well, I, I kind of get why they do it this way, though, because, you know, like, Dendro probably wasn't ready and all that. But still, like, there's... Hmm, there's stuff like that. But you're right. We should have gone to Sumeru first, or Sumeru and Inazuma should have been presented to us in alternating patterns. Like, we should have had a patch for Sumeru, and then 
we should have gotten as far as we could on the story quest and then realized, oh, we need assistance from someone in Inazuma and then gone back to Inazuma and then maybe unlocked Surumi or Seirai and then like kept going like that. You know what I mean? I think that would have been good. I think that would have been really good. But and then gone back to Sumeru, obviously, to finish things off. Um Long Dane is part of Tivat, so he probably forgot Scara. Maybe. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Um, I mean, I guess you can't really discount the possibility. I guess that would make sense, but like, is someone who's been cursed by divinity someone who can forget things? I guess you could make the argument that he says stuff like, my memory has all but faded and stuff. So so maybe that's a valid thing. If that is the case, it could it could add some weight to the argument that Alice is a descender. But then again. But then again it might not, because like D it, Alice doesn't really touch on his past all that much, only says that he has a complicated one. And it's not like Dainsliff wouldn't be able to remember the Wanderer. He just can't remember Scaramouche, right? So he could have still done it. Because, like, Wanderer is still recorded. Hard to say. Hard to say. Um, sorry, I'm I'm a little behind, guys. I'm a little behind, Stife. Uh, anyway, I was gonna thank you for your amazing content, even when your theories ended up not being correct. I learned a lot from them. <laughs> that's that's uh that's half the battle when it comes to theories. <laughs> You're gonna be wrong at least half the time. If I'm if I have more than a fifty percent hit rate, I'm doing really really well. But thank you for that, and thank you for your super chat. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, all of my theory videos are just a really clever ruse to get you guys to learn more about history and mythology and sometimes science. <laughs> Is it working? Are, are you learning things? Am I going to do anything but wander around the world with Wanderer? No, no, I'm not. This is my life now. This is my life now. Me and the little blue boy. Little boy blue, go blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow and the cow's in the corn. Yeah. Is it working? Um... Cinemo, so is there now a different person being the sixth harbinger? I don't think the Tartaglia is now the tenth, so it means the position at least existed. Yeah, so actually I can I can answer this for you. Um with a really handy dandy thingamabobber. Show don't tell. Yeah, listen, um Genshin has a horrible thing where it tells us way more than it shows us and it's annoying. I, I've long since said that. Uh, Genshin actually has a pretty mediocre story and plot, but it has just like a, a really beautiful world. The plot is just enough to keep you engaged, I think. Um, but like overall, it's the world that's really fascinating. The lore of the desert is like crazy. Anyway, uh, back to the original question. Sorry. Seems that the Sumeru Academia has made a real mess of one of their big projects. Oh. She's going to town on that bone. I don't know if you guys can hear that. The six Starshans have been left leaderless as a result, which has forced the weak Dendro Archon to take over. It's not terrible, it's wonderful news. I've heard that Lord Dottore managed to infiltrate Sumeru during the chaos and perform a great work in the Saritza's name with almost no effort at all. Just as expected from the second... Uh, you don't seem too happy. It's indeed good that the Harbinger succeeded, but I am reminded that Lady Senora succeeded at Inazuma only to explode. 
Look at you, you're worrying too much from how I see it. We don't have that many people and that's okay. With someone as powerful as Lord Dottori among our ranks, it shouldn't matter if the rest of our seats remain empty. But enough about the eighth harbinger. It is said that the sixth harbinger's seat has been left vacant for years. Is that not cause for concern? So, uh, I, I, I kind of want to talk about this a little bit more. Um, but there's, there's some, there's some questions I kind of got to get to first. So remind me of this, uh, as soon as I catch up on, on the current queue that we have going on here. Uh, I want to touch in on this. I kind of, I kind of want to go over like how it appears. How it appears that this whole like Ermensel memory thing works. Cause uh yeah. But yeah, it would be it would be around 400, 400 well actually more like 450 years, yeah, thereabouts. Um, but yeah. Uh Chris, thanks for your super chat. Hey, what do you want the Genshin anime to cover prequel material, current story, future content, side stories, or a mix of materials? Following me. I'm actually really torn about the anime, like in general. Cause like on the one hand, I don't think they'll... Mm, how do I put this? How do I, how, do I, how do I put this? I would love to see the Archon War and everything, because I think that would be really cool. But the, the problem is, is we already know how it ends. So as much as those would be really cool, it would kind of be something I would have rather them done like a... Do I want to get some Azimon materials? Or do I want to, like, go get more artifacts? I'm distracted. Um, it's, it's... I feel like it's one of those things that I would have liked to see at the end of each Archon quest for a region. Like, so we could see the Archon War in Mondstadt, and then we could see the Archon War in, in Liwa. But I also feel like there's going to be a lot of spoilery material in there, you know? And if there's a lot of spoilery material in there, they probably just won't do it. And so we're, we're just going to, I don't know. I, I'm really torn because it would be really cool for them to... Um, it'd be really cool for them to do Archon War stuff, but I, I just don't think they will. But I also don't really want them to just retell the quest that we're in because that means they'd have to pick a canonical twin in. I don't really think that's a good idea. Too slow. So what I'm wondering if they'll do is they'll if uh, they'll kind of like do what they did with Ayaka, and they'll kind of like animate vision stories and stuff for each of the characters in turn, because like that would be like not that spoilery but still really cool to see. And it also wouldn't matter uh, what twin was there, you know? But again, that means the twins just wouldn't be there at all, and that could be a weird thing. I, I think I think that would be the most reasonable thing for them to do, and kind of what I'm expecting. As much as I would love Archon War stuff, I just feel like it would spoil a lot, and then I wouldn't know what was canon between the anime and the game, and then I would be very sad. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. So I guess that's that side content, but also like past content. I just, there's a lot of really cool backstories of the characters I'd love to see. And like, we have like 50, 60 characters or something like that now. So it'd be really neat to just like, get to know each of them a little bit more. They each get their own episode. I mean, that's already a lot of episodes for an anime. You know? <laughs> Hit and Star run! I don't know why I'm not dashing. Yunk B! Thank you for the super chat! The chats that are super! Uh, do you think the Temple of Silence is an own organization or just another name for the Matra? And any theories on Sino and him using Conrian magic from the manga? Uh, I don't think that was Conrian magic, necessarily. Um, I think that's magic from his darshan. The wind rises. Eh. 
<laughs> I bet you guys didn't know we could do that. Um, the thing is, is I'm really not sure how much stuff from the manga they're keeping as canon. You know? Like, I don't know how far back they decided certain things would be in the manga and then, like, just certain things would be retconned later. Because it, it does kind of feel like... They did this whole thing with Kale, and then when they actually finally got to put her in the game, they're just like, yeah, let's just do something completely different. You know, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The only, because like, if you think about it, the only reason why... Sino would be chosen to participate in that whole thing with Kale is if the techniques that were being used for her were uh, related to forbidden knowledge or, or prohibited um, research areas, right? Because, like, he's a matra now, but in the manga, he was a student. So either Lisa didn't know who the Matra was, which would be very strange because uh, Tignari, I think, knows Lisa, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe that's not right. But either way, if, I mean, it seems like Lisa should have been at the academy or, or the, at, the, at the academia, like, around the same time as both Sino and Tignari since they went to at the same time. Or, like, they at least crossed paths, you know what I mean? So, like, they should know of each other. It doesn't make sense that Lisa wouldn't know that Sino is a matra. So, I, I don't know. Temple of Silence, though, I don't know a whole lot about it. Hat as an umbrella? <laughs> the audacity to even make that request. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I would assume that it's probably not something to do so much with, um, what you might call it, uh, the whole mantra thing, as it is perhaps to do with something with Deshret. I just don't know a whole lot about it. Ha! The wind rises. Whoops. You're dead. Come on. Mm. Is that Conry and magic? I don't think so. Sorry, there's like three questions in there. <laughs> and now I've got a head going in three different directions. Um hmm. I really don't know anything about the Temple of Silence. I just, I think it has something more to do with Deshret. Just because, just because, just because. Um. I think that was what was in his teaser. I think that was what was in his teaser. Relax. Um. Yeah. Since we have, like, the Court of Desolation and everything else, it just seems like that would be something that the Temple of Silence would fall under. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have the answer for that one. Would love to, though. Uh... Cyro's gold. Ermin still seems to only affect information. Events still happen. People are still in the same places. Only physical things change seem to be written materials that are meant to be factual. There's no such thing as pure freedom in this world. Even yeah. Way. Yeah. So on that note. On that note, um, I guess I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to so talk a little bit about Ermin's soul. How childish. Come back here. Come back here. No. Quit following oh, well. I tried. So, at the end of this quest line, if you haven't done it, um, 
I'll try to keep this as, as spoiler free as possible, I guess. I'm not gonna get that one either. Um, there's this scene where Paimon breaks a vase or a jar or whatever it is, a, a pouring vessel. And she goes to get someone to clean it up, but apparently she never got someone to go clean it up because it was still there at the end of the quest. And the whole thing about that vase was that even though memories had been rewritten and history had been rewritten, it's not as though physical things change because that vase was still there, it was still broken. The wind rises. So the point was either that Paimon did break the vase and just doesn't remember it, right? Or that the vase was always fated to be broken and it didn't matter who did it. It was just going to happen one way or another. The, the problem with, with the second one is that it, it kind of means that time itself was rewritten. But it doesn't really seem like Ermensoul itself has the ability to completely change time. Oops. Doesn't seem like Ermensel has the ability to actually change the events in the past. And that's been suggested to us. It's said that, like, you could change time, like, it's possible, but you need, like, an incredible amount of power in order to do that. And the fact that Ermensel itself isn't capable of doing it, I think, is just a testament to how powerful Istaroth might actually be. Because. The difference between what Scaramouche did and Ermensel by trying to erase himself. He ended up not being able to erase himself. And, and apparently, Ruka Devada, who's supposed to be the avatar of Ermensel, also couldn't erase herself. The only thing that she could do was create a copy of herself in the future and have them try to erase her. But the problem is, is it didn't actually erase the events of the past. What happened was that all of Ruka Devada's accomplishments and her deeds and stuff just became attributed to Kusanali, right? But Kusanali just doesn't remember anything because the story is now that when she regressed, she lost all of her memories. So instead of being born on the day of the cataclysm. She was actually just regressed into a small form. That's kind of the story, right? But the truth is, it's probably far more likely that Kusanali and Ruka Devada both still existed. It's just that no one remembers Ruka Devada, and so everyone thinks it's Kusanali, so there's nothing that can conflict. Like, no one can, can contradict that story anymore. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. But like then then you go to Inazuma, and this is the part where I really feel like we should have gone to Inazuma next and not. Like we should have gone to Sumeru first and then gone to Inazuma. Even though that would have really made things kind of weird for, for Scaramouche. I think that that would have been okay. I think they would have found a way around it. Um How do I put this? In a second story quest, when she plants the seed, right? The thing about that seed is that Istaroth had a hand in making it. And so it created a new branch for Ermensoul, right? Which is the sacred Sakura. And that effectively did rewrite right time. And A wasn't affected by that, right? Like everyone else's memories got updated, which is something that Ermensel does. But A's didn't, right? And the hypothesis is either she's completely out of the jurisdiction of um, Ermensel when that happens, or maybe she was in Conria or somewhere else, right? Like, that, that's a distinct possibility, but it's equally possible that because she was 
being assisted by uh, Isteroth, that that's why she didn't have a memory update. But that's an exception. I'm still getting used to this part. Uh, it's, it's kind of... You have to hit the wrong button, and it's kind of annoying. Because you can't plunge. So, so there's that, right? Like, so the Sacred Sakura actually changed time. It didn't just update people's memories. It actually rewrote time. It, like, created a whole new timeline, so to speak. And maybe that's the better way to think about it. Like, maybe, maybe if you have, um, branches of Erminzel already in an area, there's only so much you can change because, like, you're stuck in one timeline or whatever. But then you can update the way people remember that time. Whereas if you plant a whole new tree... If you plant a whole new tree, maybe you just create a whole new timeline. And so it actually has to, like, create time from the very beginning. Who knows? I, 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 honestly, I honestly don't understand that part. And that's where I get confused. Because it seems like Erminsel has limits, but Istaroth might not have limits. Hmm. Anyway. I, I'm, I, I saw some things flash, and I know I missed them. I'm sorry. Um. I'm going to go off the cliff. Hold up. Where was I? Sometimes my chat jumps around. And then I'm like, wait a second, where, 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 where am I? There I am, there I am. Okay, I found it. We're good, we're good, we're good. I'm caught up. Well, not really. I'm not, I'm not caught up. I just know where I was, that's all. Man, I'm gonna have a really hard time choosing between Alhatham and, and, uh, Yelan. Quit following me. Uh, cause Yelan is like probably the best practical pick for my account right now, but then, but then El Hatham's just really cool. <laughs> but I kind of don't need him. It's gonna be so hard. Uh, Fencer Dario, thanks for the super chat. Um, with Traveler having bested Scara and run-ins with Dottore, how could they make the lower harbingers like Pendulum believable threats in the future? Well, I mean, okay, so... Scara is the sixth, yes. However, he has a lot of caveats in the fight that we fought him in, right? Like, for one, Nahida was assisting us. If Nahida wasn't assisting us, like, if they took that little green thingy away... That fight against him would have been a lot harder. Like, a lot harder, for one. Also, we didn't fight him, we fought the robot. And the robot was technically level one. Because remember, they collected 168 uh, divine knowledge capsules in order to feed to him. Which is, if you don't know, the amount of materials you need to ascend a normal character from level zero to level 90. Or level one to level 90. Which means that God Scara's ascension materials were divine knowledge capsules. And he had none of them. So that thing we're fighting is a level one God Scaramouche. Level one. Like in theory. Because he never got fed the knowledge capsules. So I think that says something. But we also didn't ever fight him. Like, we've never actually fought Scara. Like, just straight up. Without Dottore, without robots, without Gnosis integrations, like, without any of that kind of stuff. We've never fought him. We've never seen his stuff prior to him getting a vision. Never. So it's really hard to actually gauge what his strength is. Um, besides that, I actually think that we're going to start meeting Harbingers in pairs instead. Um, I think we'll, we'll end up... Also, having to fight Harbingers on not-so-fair terms. 
So while Child will fight us fairly one on one, I get the feeling that someone like Pantalone or Arlecchino might not fight fair at all. And may employ like an army or like might have like another giant robot type thing from uh, Dottore and all that kind of stuff. Like I, I think all of those things are quite likely. Um, but I, I feel like just because of the amount of chapters we have left, they have to really start rolling out the Harbingers a lot more because we've only really been through like four <laughs> of 11. Um, That's far enough. Ow. I dodged too early. That was silly. Mean. Um. Yeah. I really think they'll they'll come at us in pairs. I think they'll come at us in pairs. That just makes sense to me. What do you? Pew pew. My thing jumped again. Stop jumping. Yeah. Why do you jump? Stop jumping. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Hi, grass. Kind of sad we didn't get to check on A's memory of Scara. Yeah, but sometimes it's better to not meet your birth parents. Wow. My little girl is thirsty. I can't blame her. She's just been gnawing on this bone this entire time. She's still going. That's a lot of water. I, I don't I don't actually think we're gonna I, I, I thought for once we might actually get some um Scaramotion in a interactions at some point like in his story quest or whatever i don't think that's gonna be a thing anymore i definitely don't think that's gonna happen um i think we might have like a very brief moment of recognition between the two and that's kind of gonna be where it ends i don't think they're ever gonna talk I feel kind of bad for anyone who really wanted that to happen because I I'm I'm not seeing it. I don't think they want to do that, um, and I don't think they will. Like just in general. Just in general. Core Yuri, thank you for your superest of chatterists. Quit following me. That is the technical term. Swan Fury. On the game. That's the technical. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's fine. Ah, <gasps> you did not respawn. My beloved, my sparkly. Okay. I bet the rest of these haven't either. Then, uh, if I had a nickel for every time Zach Aguilar was a protagonist in a game involving time reversal and unavoidable fate, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird as happened twice. Wait a minute. Which, which, which other game is that? I realize now I'm like too far back in the chat. I'm never going to find out which one it was. That would that would be impossible. That's not impossible. I could actually read. I don't want to read. You can't make me read. I read all... Oh, okay, yeah. None of these have respawned yet. Ow. Why are pigs so... They have so much knockback. Yeah, none of these are going to respawn. Okay, well, I guess I better wait then. Yeah, this hasn't respawned either. Okay, I'll go do something else. Time to go hunt for something. What was I going to do? I was going to do, I was going to do, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to, um, 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 um. I don't remember. I'm just wandering around. I, I have, like, there's no, I want to do more things. And I think I finally understand, like, the, the absolute frustration levels of people who want to um, play more endgame content. <laughs> Too slow. But then again, like, I, I feel like it's, it's kind of an odd thing when people um, pay their way out of a difficulty. 
you know, like, um, to buy... I know I just did this, so it sounds really funny coming from me right now. But I I do think it's very funny when in, in gacha games like this one in particular that don't have a whole lot of game modes or, or particularly um, easy-ish. When people want to spend money on constellations and, and five-star weapons and stuff to make things as cracked as possible and then complain that there's not enough of it. Like, on the one hand, I kind of get it. But you know. And but I, like, I just, I just did it. <laughs> so now it feels funny. Anyway. I got distracted. I was gonna hunt some specters. Well, let's do that. Let's hunt let's uh let's hunt some specters. I I know I'm low. And it is a very good thing to stay stocked up on these ones in particular. Cause, um... Yeah. Cause, yeah. Let's do that. Um... Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I don't know if you actually said it, Corey. Oh, Byleth, of course! Byleth! Byleth would have been the friggin... Oh, right, right, right. Okay, that, that... Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, I forget Byleth has time reversal powers. Because, like, I'm such an old-school Fire Emblem player that, like, I, I don't remember to use the time wheel. I play in such a way that, like, I don't use the time wheel because, like, I've never had a time wheel in the previous games, except for, um... Well, yeah, except except for Echoes, but that that's... That's a remake. That doesn't count. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I forgot. I forget there's time shenanigans there. I forget that's a thing. Anyway. Um, about the Wanderer trailer, the one who talks is Alice and not Dame. She remember the Wanderer in the story isn't convinced that. Isn't that? No. It, it's not, it's not convincing that because Alice voiced his story that, um, Alice is a descender. Cause like, then you have to say that there's something funky about Dory too. Cause Alice voiced that one too. too slow. So I, I... I mean, I, I think it's it's very possible Alice is a descender. I just don't think any of that is reason to believe that she is, right? Like I think that I think the possibility is there. I just don't think that the ra the reasoning um makes a whole lot of sense. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I th I feel like it should make sense. Uh, given what we know now about the works of fiction, do you also have Aquini, 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 Squinty? I think that says Squinty. A-Q-U-I-N-Y. A that's not a word. That cannot be a word. That's not English, is it? If it is, I feel like I really might want to take another gander through a dictionary. I, I might have, uh, I might be a little behind on my, on my vocab. Um... Sorry. Squinty eyes towards Yai and her light novels. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. And something that I thought was very peculiar is that... Hang on. Uh, where's this... Suspicious, not you. Um, not that either. 
this one. <laughs> um, this one. I was looking at. I was. I was trying to think about. Re Zhang Li has called the traveler the witness multiple times. He called us that in Havria's quest. He called us that in the Ajdaha quest. He's called us that uh, second hand in the 2.7 Archon quest with Shao. So, like, he keeps calling us the witness. He knows something. Uh, one, one thing that he said was that he's been trying for a very long time to find a way to record history. And he said in the early days, people carved it in stone, but even stone erodes with time. Which means that he said carving history in stone isn't foolproof, right? Mm -mm. We're not doing that right now. Mm. So... How do I put this? Okay, so so Zhang Li is obsessed with stories. He's obsessed with history and all these random factoids. He's been trying to preserve history by carving it into things, and then he's decided that the perfect history repository is the traveler, right? Because the traveler is apparently the witness. So Zhang Li knows that our memory can't be altered. So Zhang Li knows how Ermansol works. Okay. Now Venti happens to know we're gonna come back to him um wait no it is this one uh venti is a bard and bards are by nature storytellers and venti knows every song that will ever be written and every song that was ever written right and songs tend to be pretty embellished Venti also narrates the battle pass. And he says things like this, where the world is full of lost ballads just waiting to be rediscovered. So, Venti and Zhongli are the only two original archons who have not gone through a, uh, let's call it a cycle of samsara, or have not at least changed hands in one way. Like, A and Makoto were twins, right? But A did not know nearly as much as Makoto did, because Makoto was actually the Archon and A wasn't. And it's very apparent in their roles how much either of them knew, right? So when Makoto died... A was kind of left to fend for herself, and we all know that that didn't turn out all that well. Now, Nahida, as Ruka Devada, would have known basically the same amount as Zhongli and Venti, right? And she's the avatar of Ermansol, which is basically the whole thing that's supposed to record everything ever, right? And as Nahida, after she loses her memory, so she's gone through her cycle of Samsara, so she's no longer the original one that she was initially... Um, she's still trying to preserve backups in the form of children's fairy tales and potentially dreams because dreams in general are just like a whole lot of symbolism, right? And you have to decode dreams. You have to decipher them. So basically she's using all of these characters in, in Skarmouche's picture book, for example, um, to basically create a scaffolding from which, uh, Memories can be reconstructed. Okay. So, so. Do you see a pattern emerging? Of A trying not to lose sight of herself and erode. Of Zhongli trying to preserve his history as best as he can. And Venti trying to uh, record all of these great deeds of heroes and stories of events in songs and Nahida writing children's picture books. And then Yai, who was technically like the archon in place, since A wasn't actually doing the job of an archon. Like, yes, she was ruling Inazuma, but she wasn't doing the job that Makoto was probably supposed to be doing. So now Yai is making light novels. So we have stone carvings, song and poetry, children's fables, and light novels. 
or picture books and light novels, I should say. So we've got four different methods of recording history going on here. And if you look, Zhang Li's story here says, as time passed, many of the seven titles chained hands and only the two of the first seven remain in the position of rulership, which would be Venti and Zhang Li. And it says, uh, not this one. There, there's... Uh, da, 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 da. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. There's some stuff down here where he's talking about how the world changed so much that what was once familiar has faded into memory, and then the seven seats changed and again were changed till five of the seven at the table were all departed. So there were only two left, still doing the same duty of guiding humanity that would be honored by the new archons. The duty of guiding humanity is a little bit vague. I get that. That's, that's, that's fine. But when I read this in light of all the context of everything else that we've gotten, and I need to check the Chinese to make sure that I'm, I'm right about the nuance here. I don't necessarily it's, think it's the, the duty of guiding humanity necessarily, but the duty imposed to them as the archons is the duty to remember and to record and to preserve, right? That's probably a really long... Con this is what happens when I don't have time to write a script ahead of time. Don't mind me. Um, but this is this is kind of a pattern that's emerging, especially since the Fatui are based off of a type of theater, which is another way to record history, right? It also means that things like the battle pass don't actually need to be literal. They can be allegories. Like, it doesn't have to be a princess. It doesn't have to be a pr heir. It doesn't have to be a kingdom. It doesn't have... Like, you, can't run. you have to look at, like, the core story being told. And then distill what the important points are. And then you can take those important points and compare them against other things that might be considered more historical and figure out where the discrepancies are. And that's kind of, like, what the new challenge is. And this is the moment when you realize that Genshin is not an action-adventure RPG. It's actually a mystery game. So that's cool. I don't know why I'm picking these up. I don't need them. Too slow. Sorry, I, I went I went off. <laughs> I went off on a really long tangent. Uh, Cass, thanks for your super chat. Uh, Folklore might be what... A was supposed to be. Hopefully they do it right. Imagine if we get into the the comedy of public safety. And at Robot, Robot, I don't know that one. I don't know that one at all. I'm sorry. I like to consider myself well read, but sometimes I'm not. I do think um, it's interesting that they're going with the notion that she really likes the theater or the drama in the theater of the courtroom. Because a courtroom is another way of, of how to say, um, recording history. Or analyzing history, rather. That's really what's going on. That's what's really going on. Melkindor! Thanks for the 20 gifted! Good great. Didn't you give, like, a ton of gifted last time? Jeez. That is obscenely generous, thank you. <laughs> and everyone who got a membership from the gifted, please thank Melkindor for their very generous, uh, for their very generous gift. It's very, very, very sweet. You know the thing I hate about Watatsumi is I always end up going around in circles and sometimes I do like the same thing for like... three runs before I go, wait a minute, I've been around here like three times already, what's going on? <laughs> Ah, uh, dear, 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 dear. 
Huang Man Su Yeah, Dory is a close business partner of Alice. Yeah, I know. I know. But that doesn't mean that you know, oh, wait. This is a problem. You can't run. No my sword. My one nemesis. And Nemo's specters. You can't run. My one weakness. Rude. Sorry. Um. Yeah, but like, even if she's a close business partner of Alice, that doesn't mean Alice had to be the one to um, narrate her thing. Because Dainsliff still could have done it, and Dainsliff could have also talked about Alice while he did it. Um, but they didn't do that. So, there may be a pattern in, um, in what they're going for when it comes to choosing which characters uh, Alice narrates and which ones Dane narrates. Um, but I won't pretend to know what it is, because I don't. I do not know what it is. But thank you for the super chat. I just, like, I, 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 again, I, I do think there's a distinct possibility that Alice is a descender. I do. I, I think that's possible. But I don't think using narration as the rationale for why she's a descender is good. I, I don't think that's what we should be taking away from here. Uh, does Six Harbinger still exist or did the whole order move up? Um, Luma, thanks for the super chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, recommend one thing to you, because we, we already talked about this. Um, I'm just gonna show you one thing. If you go to Mondstadt here, to this teleport point, and then talk to the Fatui, they'll tell you everything you want to know about the Six Harbinger position. Basically, it's just been vacant for like 400 years, and no one knows why. Yep. Aster posted something funny on, on Twitter. She was like, I can't imagine... <laughs> She's like, I can't imagine, you know, Skarmouche finally getting his revenge arc against... Oh my god, that's gotta be a pain in the ass. Finally getting his revenge arc against Dottore. Um, busting into the... Ah, oh, jeez. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Busting into the Fatui HQ being like, Hey, remember me? And then they're all like, no. And he's like, oh, right. <laughs> like, that's gonna be awkward. I mean, funny, but also just Time to act. awkward. Oh, these Nemo Spectres, please. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's just vacant. It's just a vacant position that's basically always been vacant. Who knows? It's kind of the other reason why I say, like, Ermansoul probably can't alter actual events via de deletion. Um, any thoughts on Skara being sent into the Abyss? Yeah, I mean, it looks like Skara Musha's, um, job in the Fatui, like, his role, was basically to be, like, a recon man. Like, an inf- like a- like a reconnaissance. Like, he's- he's kind of like Eula. Head of reconnaissance. Doing small missions and, like, gathering information, that kind of thing, working in the shadows. Which is actually kind of interesting, because, like, he's now going to be Nahida's shadow. Kind of working in the distance, being like, hey, don't get your hands dirty, I'm going to do it for you. Um, which I think is actually really funny, because that kind of makes him Nahida's Kage Musha, which is exactly what his mother was. And I just, I, I take great amusement in that. Oh, another Anemo one. Why? Why are you all Anemo? Let me leave you a 
That's just silly. Judgment. Body and mind. Um, right, but being sent into the abyss. So, something interesting. If you've read Scaramouche's uh, character stories, some of you may have, some of you may not. Either way, that's totally cool. Um, you might actually learn that he's made using a Conrian technique, like the technology used to create him is Conrian in nature, which is part of the reason why Dottori was so interested in, um, in studying him to begin with. But it also says that he's been carved of white wood. So the materials used to build him are just described as white wood. That doesn't seem noteworthy until you realize that every mention of wood that is either silver or white is referencing Ermensel directly. So, that's basically saying that he's carved out of branches of Ermensol just like Nahida is. Which is weird. Except he, he is mechanical. Like, Nahida is like a life form birthed from a branch of Ermensol. Whereas Scaramouche is actually like a mechanical pup. He's like legitimately mechanical. I don't know if any of you... Um, uh, da, 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 da. let's see. I forget which voice line it is. Um, this one about the captain. He's, he's he explicitly says even my mechanical ears demand maintenance after listening to so many complaints. So, he, he is a machine. He's just made out of Ermensol wood. And I think part of the reason why he was the one sent to the Abyss and not some of the others might be because he may be naturally resistant. Because remember, Conrian technology, like the Ruin Guards and stuff, they may not be made from Ermensol, but they do have Ermensol branches growing out of them, which means parts of them might be made of Ermensol wood, right? And since they were used to fight abyssal corruption, even if it was just in, in uh, the desert, because we don't, we're not able to confirm it anywhere else yet, um, they they must have had some level of resistance to it, right? So I think they picked him to do the abyss runs specifically because he was really resilient to to uh, corruption. And forbidden knowledge corruption. And that also might be why he was able to even attempt to delete himself from Ermensel to start with, even though he was like severely um, weakened. Even though he was really weak after that battle. And Nahida was all like, wait a minute, why does he still have like enough power to do this whole like self-deletion thing? That's not supposed to happen. I think it might actually be because he has like a natural affinity for um Ermensel, just by nature of potentially being carved out of it. Oops. I missed my timing. Mm. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. I'll go over it again in a proper video where it's not like all scattered throughout a random ass stream. I promise it'll be in there. Milkendor, thanks for the super chat. You know, you can just send a dollar if you want a super chat, right? And that if you if you are a member, you, you do get the ability to highlight your own comments without having to to do a full super chat like you 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 know that right like i appreciate the generosity but damn man you can you you don't you don't have to uh aren't the best stories comprised of adventure and mystery though yes i will say that though like for for all the shit i give um genshin's actual story story like it's plot um they are very very good at um creating intrigue and mystery. That much I will give them. You can't run. Out. 
Target. <laughs> Too far away. Too far away. Is that enough still? Well, it's almost enough. I just need one more refinement on this weapon and he'll have enough to always have his burst back with one skill cast. I'm going to be so proud of that. <laughs> I hate having him on sacrificial. I just, it's so annoying. Right. Anyway, uh, where was I, where was he going? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just go back up here, I guess. Um... Kibu, I'm calling it now. The Hydra Archon will look similar to Vil V. Um, yeah, maybe. Vil V is a good uh, option for Hydra Archon. Um, I think Durandal is also a really good um option for Folklore, and I I think uh, Sele is also a really good option for Folklore. I think I think all of them are. I think Sele makes the most sense to me for Folklore. I think. Um, but, I, I mean, like, my, my current hypothesis is that all Archons are a mix of one Flame Chaser and one Hersher from Honkai. Like, in terms of their inspiration. And everyone's just like, oh, you know, Zhongli isn't referencing anybody. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. He's, he's totally referencing. Um, but, like, Raiden, for example, actually isn't Raiden... May necessarily. Skarmouche is more right in May in basically every aspect of his story than um, A will ever be. Um, but A is actually very much like Dr. May, who was a flame chaser, right? She's very, very much. But she also has a Hersher of Thunder powers. So I think about that kind of stuff a lot. I think, I think about like how a lot of people think um, the God of Time will be based on Alicia from Honkai. So the Hersher of Human Ego. Um, and then we think about all of Venti's connections to her. And then I, I look at Venti again. I'm just like, yeah, you know what? You have quite a lot of Alicia's personality in you. But you are obviously um, referencing the Hersher of Wind, who's Wen uh, Wendy. So I think Folklore has the possibility of being both Vilvi and... The wind rises. Um... Yeah! Either Durandal or um, Sele. Quite easily. It's realistic. This is realistic. Oh, it's Hydro. I can take a Hydro one. Too slow. Famous last words. Give me those sweet, sweet hearts. Um, assuming the Pyro Archon is the god of war or something similar, wouldn't that mean that the god is trying to preserve history through war? Maybe. I mean, contracts and freedom aren't necessarily methods of preserving history. Right. So, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't uh, look at war as her method of preserving history, because Venti's freedom isn't his method of preserving history, right? His his songs are, which aren't really related to his uh, ideal, so to speak. Like, those, those are different things. Those are different things, altogether. Uh, open endings. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, would the Fatui now classify Kuni as a descender? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't think so because he didn't descend from anywhere. He was he was uh, created on Tevat. Um, and there's no evidence that his memory won't be altered. Because, like, when, when he did the self-deletion thing, his memories were altered. Like, yeah, he tried to delete himself, so obviously that would make sense. But... If he was a descender, like, you would think that his memories wouldn't be altered by that attempt, right? Like, he shouldn't be able to delete himself. I don't know where I'm going. So, no, I don't, I don't think they'll classify him as a descender. 
what I would like to know, though, is, like, if his job was to go do, like, unreconciled stars and, and investigate the false sky and then investigate the abyss and stuff, like, presumably, the Fatui still have all of that intel and everything. This is actually kind of funny. Um, they, they presumably still have all that intel, right? So where did they get it? If Skara didn't give it to them. That's what I want to know. There are all these little paradoxes that I don't like with this whole memory rewrite thing, which is why I like to pretend that it doesn't actually alter time. It just makes people forget what happened. Yeah. Do I think Piero is going out? Because it doesn't seem like him, Sandrone, Puccinella, and Pentalone would ever leave the nation. Um. No, Pentalone has left the nation, though. I think. I'm, I'm fairly certain. Oh, I can't remember. I have to go look it up. There's, um, there is, uh, I, I believe it's evidence that he was in Liyue. Not, not to mention, like, you know, he runs the Northland Bank, which is based in Liyue. So I would assume that he does go out sometimes. I would assume that Piero probably doesn't leave, um, Shnezhnaya much, though. I would assume it would be pretty rare. After all, it, it's kind of... Are these, these are an emo, aren't they? Oh my god. I was trying to swirl, and now I got stuck. We'll see about that. Dare to mess with me. You can't run. Oh, these Anemo ones are so annoying. Hi. Judgment. My frame rate just tanked. Oh my god. Okay. That's better. Oh my god. I hate these little things. No, my sword. Just die already. Uh, wherefore art thou, specters? Oh, okay. Use Ganyu. Look, I don't have a Ganyu. Why would I? Why would I have a Gan? I don't want a Ganyu. Did you not just watch me pull for a C six Scara? Like, why? Why would I go for Ganyu? I don't. I don't want to do that. Does Wanderer's hat count as part of his body like an extra arm or something? You know, I wondered that. <laughs> I, I think that's possible. I think part of the reason he has a hat might might be because it is part of his body. But it also might be something more like Ayaka's fan, you know? Mm, I wonder if I could swim that distance. What do you think? Maybe? Oh, yeah. We can manage this. Did Scar actually delete himself or did Nahida delete him? I'm asking because Ruka Devada couldn't delete herself, so how could Scar do it? And if Nahida did it, why? Um, I think the point was that Scara couldn't delete himself, so he just ended up deleting everyone's memories of him. Which is a slightly different thing. Slightly different. But this is kind of what I mean when there's like a lot of paradoxes that are kind of funky when you start going into this territory. So I don't know. It's weird. Come here, little crab. You're mine now. You're mine now! Oh my god. Chat, stop 
jumping on me. I'm trying to keep focus. It's already hard enough. Not not good at this. Arturo, thanks for the super chat. Uh, hi, I just wanted to ask, in terms of meta, you consider that Ayato would be a better unit than a Raiden C2. I already have her C0, but I really like Ayato. I loved the last video. Well, thank you. Um, I... Okay, so first off, I am not a theory crafter. <laughs> so I couldn't tell you, like, for sure, 100% what the better option is, but I'll... Let me, let me give you, um... Here, here's how I'd approach it instead. If you want to run Raiden right Hyper Carry, like she is the primary damage dealer on your team, go ahead and go for her C2. If you use her as a support me. or like a sub DPS, I would not waste the Primos. I really wouldn't. I, I don't I don't think it's worth it. Like I have I have a friend who mains Raiden and um he has her C2. And he ends up doing like five hundred thousand with her first with her burst initial hit. Which is a lot and it's great. But I guess the question is, do you think that one burst hit's gonna make you clear faster? And like, do you really need that? I, I personally, like, I, I'm, I know I'm kind of hypocritical because I just, I just, you know, C6 to freaking five star. <laughs> um, but this is my only C6 and probably the only C6 I'll ever get, unless I go for Xiao, but that's that's different. Xiao's a little bit different. He's, he's a very different case than um, most because his gameplay is like completely different at C6 from anything else. Like it's just, it's not, anyway, not, not the point. But I don't necessarily think it's smart to pull for constellations if they're not actually going to help you clear significantly faster. Like, honestly, if, if Skaramouche had come out um, along with Inazuma, right? I probably would not have C6'd him. I probably would have just gotten C1 maybe because I really like him and I usually get C1s for characters I really like because I don't pull that often and so I end up having the Primos for it. But you'll probably get way more mileage out of um, a whole new character instead. Ayato and Raiden are a pretty fun combo. Plus, I think a lot of people, like, theory crafters especially these days, actually really like to run EM Raiden, which means she's never using her burst. I can't... Really? I can't reach those? That's sad. But yeah, so, sorry. I, yeah, that was, that was long. Um, I'd go for Ayato, honestly. Did I just get three element buffs? Yeah, no, I, I can do that. So, oh, maybe because I have Hydro here. Probably can't, yeah. Um, I have C6, and his C4 allows me to do that. So you can see I get... I should be able to get three when I do that. Mm. I was looking at my thing. Doesn't look like I got it, but... Um, C4... C4 actually um, gives me a random buff. So I can get two from his Ascension 4, and then I can get a third one um, from his Constellation 4, but it's random. It's really strong in Taser, though, because it means that you can get a plenty... Because uh, you're always going to be swirling Electro and uh, Hydro, so you can either get, at random, uh, an attack boost, a 30% attack boost, or a 20% crit rate boost um, for Taser, which is, like, honestly really fun. I was hunting specters. Why am I fighting Hillichurls? This is silly. Ah, uh, but da but da. Hey, 
Hang on, hang on. I, I... Chad, stop jumping! Uh, Onibush! Thanks for the super of chats! Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Where am I going? All the way over there. Oh, good lord. Okay, we're, we're gonna run around. I don't want to swim. Um, does Scara Pantalone... Or Pantalo voice... Does Scara Pantalo voice make Baiju maybe puppet? Does Scara Pantalo voice... Oh, 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 wait, oh, okay, hang on. I think I know what you're asking. Um, you mean this one, right? The fact that he's working closely with the doctor? I, I think that's possible. So, um, in, if you don't know, um, in the Comedia, in the Comedia dell'arte, um... Pantalone and the Doctor are actually, um... I don't want to call them foils. It's not quite right. Um, they're, they're very closely related. Uh, oftentimes... Pantalone is the Doctor. Right? Because they're, they're meant to be archetypes. And it just so happens that, um, a lot... The Doctor and, uh, Pantalone and, and the Commedia share a lot of... Archetypes, or a lot of a lot of traits, I should say, which makes them like pretty comparable. So the the fact that they're working together is probably a reference to the Commedia, and the fact that they were often um, portrayed together as working together or were the same person. So I think that's what that is. Um, it would be very interesting though if the reason why. Um, Pantalone was working with the doctor was because, like Baiju, who we know is trying to look for some sort of secret to immortality, as per his relationship with Chi-Chi, um, if he was, in theory, able to uh, kind of find something like immortality by means of creating himself puppet bodies, too. I think I think that would be quite interesting. Quit following me. Yeah. How realistic is it though? I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Yeah. Let me leave you the wind rises. Oh, it's such a pain in the ass when they're immune to two of the elements you're using. I'll just swirl you to death, I guess. There. <laughs> yeah. So it's possible. But that might be how they make the, the lower-ranked Harbingers more uh, threatening, by pairing them with higher-ranked Harbingers and having to fight both of them at the same time, or something to that degree. It's not like we had to fight Dottori this time with Scaramouche, you know? But, like, we were introduced to him. So maybe we'll have to fight him with uh, Regrotter. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, Runa, thank you for your superest chats. Uh, who do you think talks to us at the end of the quest? I know the popular consensus is that it's uh, supposed to be Istaroth. I'm actually thinking it's Mona's master. Is that weird? Probably a little bit. Um, let me, let me elaborate. So, okay. I don't know how many of you here have actually watched the video I put out recently on the, on the Hexen Circle and the Forbidden Knowledge stuff. Um, in that video, I was pitching the idea that Mona's Master was part of the Hexen Circle. The Hexen Circle is doing urban soul exploration and so on and so forth, right? So... Am I like... Oh, it's glitched. Oh no, it's the thing. Oh, okay. I was very confused why that wasn't doing any damage. Um, Mona's master... 
does a lot of research into telling the future, right? And the voice that we talk to basically talks about the futility of fate, like how you can't really change the things that are fated to happen, even though you can kind of change the way that they happen. You still can't change the outcome. Like, if, if a vase breaks, the vase breaks. It doesn't matter who broke it. It's still a broken vase as the result, right? And the whole focus on results does not sound like Estoroth to me. And I've also had this theory for a while now that three of the Hexen Circle members right now are, in fact, based on three Honkai Flame Chasers. This might sound familiar to you because it's kind of in line with the Archon stuff, right? Um, but, like, the way I see it, Ryan Daughter's field of research has a lot of overlap with Mobius in her, you know, questionable human experimentation and stuff, right? Um, her very, very questionable sense of ethics. Um, that reminds me of Ryan Daughter. And Mobius. All right. So the, the, I can't help but like see those two as kind of somewhat synonymous. And then I look at Alice and obviously she feels a lot like Alicia. But I know I already said that about Venti, but there's no reason why you can't have multiple. Absolutely no reason why you can't have multiple references or XBs or whatever. In the same game. Um... And then Mona's master reminds me of Aponia, who was basically obsessed with the idea of destiny and fate and inevitability and that kind of stuff. And so it really seemed to me like her field of research also overlapped because like Alicia was kind of obsessed with this idea of the human condition as it was in the present. And Mobius was obsessed with this idea of evolution and research and that kind of stuff, right? And... Aponia, and therefore Mona's master, is really obsessed with, with fate and outcome. So I, I can't help but think that it, it might be Mona's master. Because a lot of people have thought that, you know, Mona is from Fontaine. Although there's not really a whole lot solid there it's just like a vibe Too slow. i think i think the whole mona is from fontaine thing is like literally just based on vibes which i think is super funny um <laughs> oh, i'm on cooldown but if she is we're going to fontaine next so it would kind of make sense to me that that would be the voice that we would hear in our head. And like, sure, maybe it seems weird that they're talking through us long distance and talking in our heads or whatever, but like, again, we're talking about people who may be quite knowledgeable on Ermensel and how it works, and Nahida can already do that. Alicia created, or not Alicia, Alice created long-term Doroko, Doro communicators, you know, that you can use and all that kind of stuff. So like, I don't think it's without outside of the realm of possibility. I don't think it's Istaroth. It just feels weird because, like, why would the god of time, who has literally changed history, talk to us about futility? That feels super weird to me. And maybe that's just me. Maybe, maybe I, there's something I'm not seeing. But that feels super weird to me. I'm, I'm literally just doing this to swirl. Actually, this is a good way to test his ICD, isn't it? I mean, it's pretty quick. Rain outlines your fate. I've been trying to test his ICD because I still don't know what it is. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking about the end of the quest. So, um, Kwong, thanks again for the super chat. Uh. How does the Fatui classify someone as a Descender? 
I don't know. I don't think anyone does. But, I mean, just by the nature of their name, it would imply that they descended from somewhere. Like, they came from above, right? Because in order to be a descender, you must descend. And a lot of Genshin is built around this concept of ascending, so going up. So if someone can go up, it would make sense that someone can also go down. To me, anyway. Oops. Oh, there's another one. But that would be my guess. But we we legitimately don't know anything. Like there's there's no way to confirm anything like beyond the name. And the only reason we can really confirm the name is just because like that's the same name that they use in Chinese. Like it's actually a pretty accurate translation, so that's why I'm willing to call it a reliable thing. Oh. I missed. Do do. Yeah. Screwed up his thing. Yep, see, he could get his full burst back if I just did one more refine. Yeah, I'm so mad. One day I'll get a sword billet. One day, you'll see. You'll see, it'll happen. Well, actually, I probably won't. I haven't been doing all three of my boss runs every week. I've just been doing the Scara one because I have so many mats of all the other ones, it's kind of feels pointless. Feels pretty pointless, you know? Upon the gale. Ow. That's far enough. That was mean. Like I did not dodge in time. Did not dodge in time. Ghost Pass, why do you keep telling me to use Ganyu? I don't have a Ganyu. Like, they're just not on my account. How do I use them? And also, why would I want to? I hate charged bow units. You know what's great about Faru's on at C6? You actually don't have to use her skill at all. Like, it just doesn't exist anymore. You can just ignore it. She'll still have her burst back up on cooldown. That is the best part about having Farazan at C6. Nothing else, just that. You don't have to use her skill at all. So you gain a lot of field time. Anywho, Jaychan. Uh, where in the timeline do you think the scene of Skarmush teaser video happens? Where the blue Skarmush meets his original? I think that happened during the deletion event, maybe. Or it could be something that hasn't happened yet. Like, remember, this is an interlude quest. I've, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, you know, he's not going to get a story quest because, you know, it's, he's got an interlude quest. And I'm like, that's not how interludes work. <laughs> like, if, if Hoyo really wanted to do that, like, actually make his story quest into an interlude quest, they would have just made him have a story quest and just made it required. They've done it before with other story quests. Like, it's, it's not a big deal. So... I think it's quite possible that this interlude is just a setup for a bunch of stuff that's going to happen. Like, he's already said he owes us a favor, right? He owes us a favor. He's definitely not done with the Tori yet. He's, we've now built up a possible revenge arc against the Tori, right? He actually wants to slice him limb from limb. I, it's, it's, this is one of my favorite lines. Favorite one of his... I don't know if any of you actually listened to this. I'm gonna play it because it's it's my favorite line of his right now. It's a pity that lesser Lord Kusumori love this one. already forced him to erase so many of his segments. The joy I would have derived from slicing them apart one by one. I love this line. So good. So good. So he's he's got a whole vengeance against the Fatui thing now. Um he's basically Kusanali's Kagemusha. He owes the Traveler a favor, like I said before, and he still has a lot of unresolved things with the Raiden Gokuden and stuff because, remember, 
Kazuha's story quest was required for the interlude quest. And then at the very end of the interlude, he tells us, oh, uh, by the way, you can go ahead and tell everyone that I wronged in terms of the bladesmith that I did it, that it was me. And uh, they can come seek revenge themselves. Okay, cool. Bye. Um, so he's already done that. So we've got that whole subplot that needs resolving. We're going to see a lot more of him. And I don't think his, his story is anywhere near complete. I think this is the end of Scaramouche's story. So I guess you could consider that... Um, the interlude was was the Scaramouche story quest, I guess. Um, and that the next story quest will be a Wanderer story quest. That's probably my favorite thing is that he can juggle. <laughs> Juggling enemies in the Abyss is so much fun. Um, I, I did an Abyss run on stream with him when I first got him. And I didn't really know how to use him very well. But now that I've kind of gotten the hang of him, I don't need a shield anymore. So much fun without a shield if you just learn how to zip zoom around. Um, now I go into the abyss and I can just juggle enemies. It's so much fun. It's like an actual blast. Anyway. Good stuff. What was I saying? I completely forgot. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that part of his quest might... Or that part of his quote-unquote story hasn't happened yet. I think that's a future development. There's a whole bunch of dudes over here. Hi, dudes! Whatcha? Do you, though? Well, I, I really want to build an e like a full EM Skaramouche just for funsies. I think it would be awesome. Because he attacks so fast, I'm wondering that if I keep max attack speed on him, like, if I can actually get more swirls off than other Anemo units with full EM. I'm, I'm just, I'm really curious to test it, but, um, this is actually one of the first times I've actually wished we could turn off constellations. I've never asked for that before, but I really kind of want to right now because I want to see what the difference is because I, I neglected to test it because I was so excited just to have it. Um, I really want to be able to turn it off now. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand the plight. All of a sudden. <laughs> whale problems. Even though I didn't actually whale. I have a really terrible um, Desert Pavilion set too. So it's kind of... The Desert Pavilion set is such a huge spike for him. I don't, I don't think any... Theory Crafter so far has actually really emphasized it to the point I feel like it should be emphasized. Like, I have a really cracked Viridescent set because I farmed the hell out of Viridescent for crit pieces for Shao. Oh, I hate these things. And because I did, I just had so many really amazing pieces, right? And so I put them on him, and I'm just like, oh, this is going to be great. And it was okay on him. He did decent damage, but, like, I have a Desert Pavilion set with, like, half the crit value of my Viridescent set. And there is, like, legitimately no comparison. There, there, the Desert Pavilion set still out damages the Viridescent set, which is bonkers. It's just bonkers. <laughs> like, what the hell? Anyway, um, C6, what about C6 Bennett? Why, why are you test, why, I, I don't ever want to toggle off C6 Bennett. C6 Bennett is good. I don't know what everyone's, I don't run any physical DPSs though. That's probably why I don't have a problem with C6 Bennett. I also just think there are better supports for C6 Bennett than, um, or better options for physical units than, I screwed that rotation up. That's my bad. The wind rises. Like, oh cool, charge attacks. I can just kind of like bypass his shield. That's neat. I didn't know that. Um Yeah, I don't I don't run any uh physical units, so the the C6 Bennett's never bothered me. Oh hey look. 
Imagine that. It's never bothered me. Um, yeah. And like C2 Ito, I don't even mind having on all the time because it's just a quality of life. It just means I can run less energy, right? Like that's, that's cool. Um, but C6 Scar is the one thing I really wish I could toggle off so that I could, I could just see exactly what it's doing and I can't and I'm kind of sad, but maybe I'll just try to borrow someone's account sometime and compare notes that way. <laughs> uh, might be what I have to do. Eula might not like C6 Bennett, but I also don't have a Eula, so it's not my problem. I also, like, I, I also just think there are better options than Bennett for that kind of stuff. Like, it, it feels weird to run a pyro unit in a cryo team, but, like, I get that Bennett is just universal. So, like, I, I get it. I keep forgetting to do my charge before I cast skill. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like Eula has better support options than Bennett. Like, it's good for, for snapshot damage, like, all that, but, like, when you think about it, when you really think about it, it's kind of, I don't know. It doesn't feel very good. Can't you just play Wander on the trial? He's too... Well, yeah, I mean, I can play him on the trial, but the problem is, is, like, the trial is just slimes and shit. Right? Like, it's it's literally just slimes and stuff. Like, it's not... There's not a lot. Quit following me. Oh, hey, look! <laughs> we have a... C0 Wonder volunteer <laughs> i'll take you up on that bast i didn't know you were here <laughs> it's kind of funny though like he has a real skill cap he's he's very different compared to other units you definitely have to get used to him Do you need a shield with him? No. The one thing I have noticed, and I think this is my one gripe with him, like, period. I really only have one gripe with him. Um, and that is that... I've realized I don't have nearly the amount of supports that I need to, like, really make this guy shine. Like, the amount of supports I have, I just- I never realized how many, like, just straight-up DPS units I have instead. Something else I learned... Maybe you guys don't know this. Um... I really like following the- the Japanese theorycrafting community because... I don't know what it is about their... I don't want to call it programming, um... Because that sounds weird, but just like the the kind of stuff that motivates them, I don't know what it is about it, but like they just have such different sensibilities and things that they look for from the English theory crafting community. Um, and one thing that I thought was really interesting is that um, if you have a C zero Scaramouche, he's actually not a normal attacker. He's a charged attack spammer. And the fun thing about his charged attack... I'm, I'm really bad at doing it on the controller. Um, but it's really, it's much easier on the mouse. But, like, he can actually get in a lot of charge attacks on a six-second cooldown. And I've been able to get him with Dotoko Tails. Like, I, I actually... I, I explicitly nerfed myself. I explicitly nerfed my my Scara and I, I put Dota coattails on him instead of his uh, signature and I swapped around a bunch of his stuff and I just limited myself to doing charge attacks because I'm pretty sure like none of his constellations actually boost charge attacks. 
Uh, yeah, none of his stuff actually boosts charge attacks at all. So my Scar's charge attack damage, it should be the same as a C1 Scar's charge attack damage. And with Dodo Coattails and a Bennett and a Zhongli, um, I was able to get about 50k charge attack spams with a Dodo Coattails. Okay, that's a four star weapon. <laughs> and with Farazan, I was able to hit 67k um, reliably within Bennett Burst. So that was really interesting to me because in, in that context, he actually ends up Oh, this is so awkward because of controller and I have to keep spinning. He actually ends up... Um, he ends up as a... Uh, more free-to-play friendly Shao. Which sounds super weird. Oh my god, stop. The amount of spam calls I get lately, I swear to god. Um... Yeah, so he ends up being a little bit more like a free-to-play friendly Shao because you can actually run him with free-to-play options or four-star options or even just, like, um, normal pool stuff, right? And he has no energy requirements for that because you can just spam his skill every six seconds. So his rotations are really um, fast, and if you want to do N1C or N2C, uh, you can actually, like, just eke out a shit ton of damage. And if you toss Farazan in there, like, it gets even better. So I think that's really interesting. Like the, the normal attack spamming doesn't actually start eking out over his charge attack spamming until you have um, a considerable amount of attack speed. Which may mean getting his C1 or having a C6 um, Yunjin, right? So that's fun. We could actually, we could, I could show you that. That could be fun. That could be fun. Do we want to go look at the charge attack spam? I'm just kidding. I won't do that. I promised lore on here and I, I ignored chat while I was ranting. Um, that's like my one thing. It just, it just annoys me that I can't use Kaya with him. I can't use Shinobu with him. I can't use Toma with him, which is annoying because Toma is like a perfect pair for him. It's just that like, when you're in the air, Toma's fiery collapse will not hit things that are on the ground. And that is infuriating. Too slow. It's because you won't have, like, the consistent pyro, pyro application to swirl. And, like, I know swirls don't sound like they do a lot, but when you have mobs and stuff, like, it's an additional... For a, a very low EM or no EM Scaramouche, it's, it's, like, it's like an additional 3,000 damage every so often, which ends up being, like, 12... 16,000 or so or more um, during his entire rotation, which is significant. That's not even, like, Toma's damage, even though Toma's damage is kind of negligible depending on how you build him, but whatever. Y you kind of get what I'm saying, right? Like, that that annoys me. That annoys me. Like, you can use Shangling with him, but you cannot use Kaya. It's so annoying, because Shangling's um, Pyronado will stay on the ground, but Kaya's burst, his Glacial Waltz, will follow you, follow you into the air. It's, it's just, like, and so most of the supports that I have just don't work for him. Which is why I'm like, if Yelan comes back, she's like the best pull I could have for this account. Which is really bad because it's been it's it's been at least six That's months since she ran. So there's a very good chance she runs in 3.4 with Alhatham. And if that happens, I'm in trouble. Because I am not a whale. This might surprise you. I am not a whale. I am a BP Welkin player. I've whaled for one character and one character only, and it's going to stay that way. <laughs> Even then, most of these were, like, free-to-play gems. So... I don't know why I'm over here. None of these are respawning. Um... But, um, where was I going? Anyway! Landon, do you think we'll see more gods who go by more of a job title rather than a name such as Sustainer or something like Weaver, for example? I think that's quite possible. Like, I think Barbados is the only god we have right now that doesn't have a title. 
Like, I guess he's the god of freedom, but like the other Archons, like... Zhongli is technically Rex Lapis, right? Like... He's actually not good in here. But I, I kind of want the Hydro Swirl. <laughs> Like, Zhang Li is really Rex Lapis, and then Kusanali is, um... Well, I guess Kusanali doesn't have one either, huh? I was, I was gonna say, like, the Raiden Shogun... She's the Raiden Shogun, that's not her name. <laughs> so... Stuff like that. Um... I, I kinda wanna... For funsies... A walk would be nice. Oh yeah, I guess Lesser Lord Kusanali is the equivalent of a Rex Lapis, huh? Yeah, okay, that well I guess that makes sense. Casual name Demon Man except Venti only has two out of three. I guess you could just say that Bard is his Title. <laughs> Tone deaf bard. Title be lesser lord. Yeah, I mean, Kus yeah, Kusanali would be her, her title. Um, folks are right about that. Um, I just realized Yunjin probably doesn't have what she needs on. Oh dear. I should probably build a second Favlance. Honestly. Is Albedo good with Wanderer? Uh, if you're gonna run double Geo, yeah? Woohoo! That was without a Yunjin. <laughs> Yeah. He's so fun, guys. Like, I, you know, if anyone tells you that he's really hard, he is at first, but trust me, he gets better. He gets way better. I'm going to keep that. He just takes a lot of getting used to. Yeah, raw damage to Geo 2 and Emo is actually really fun. 3 and Emo with Venti or Kazuha um, with Bennett is also really fun because Bennett will infuse Kazuha's burst, and so it allows constant pyro application for um, Scar to swirl. Solidified. There's lots of cool stuff like that. Oh, I used that a little early. That's all right. Did I miss? Oh, nope. Got it anyway. We good! Like, this domain was really hard when I first tried it, and then after running it a few times, it's actually a lot easier. Uh, why doesn't Kusanali question her lesser lord title, especially since the memory rewritten makes it out to be that she was always a Dendro Archon? Um, I think... It's that she was originally called Greater Lord Kusanali. But then when she, quote unquote, lost her memories and shrunk, <laughs> she, um, she became, um, you know, lesser, lesser lord. Because she was small. Um, Abab, do you think Alhatham is going to be as fun, more fun, or less fun than Wanda? Okay, first off, I, I'm a little bit biased, but understand that I also really love Alhatham. And I say this with the best of intentions. I... I, I don't really like what I've seen so far. I mean, like, it's, it's very pretty. Um, I, I think he'll be fine. I just, I don't think he'll be groundbreaking. How's that? Like, the, part of the reason why Wanderer is so much fun is because he's novel, right? Like, he flies. 
He's got all these different little like gimmicks and mechanics and stuff, and that's really fun, right? I don't think Al Haytham is going to have that same novelty, so I don't think he'll have the same fun factor. Will he still be good and enjoyable? I'm sure he will. I, there's no reason to think he won't be. Mm. I am I am the person who will tell you to just pull for your favorites and just make them work regardless. Like even if Scara had had the most horrific scalings ever, I would have just built him full EM, honest. Like I it wouldn't have mattered to me. Like an emo catalysts are always fine. That's kinda like whatever. Um like you'll you'll find ways to make him work. At the end of the day, that's all it, that's that's what it's about. Play your faves and enjoy watching them. I see nothing wrong with that. Doop it up, yeah. Which name did I give Scar? You can see it on screen. Why are you asking me? <laughs> It's right there. Do you, you see it? I named him Fujin. Um, because... Well over a year ago, I made an analysis video for, um... For Beelzebul, for A. I don't remember how to get out of here. Was oh, there just nothing down here? There might just be nothing down here. Um, I made an analysis video for Beelzebul, and I talked a lot about Scaramouche in there because I was I was pointing out like, look how similar these guys are. These two are totally related. I bet that Scara is actually like, you know, Beelzebul's little brother or something. That was where my head was at. Um, and in that same video. I said, because he has the bag of winds on the back, on his back, and because of all these other little things about Raiden being a parallel to Raijin from mythology, it's very possible that Scaramouche might actually end up being a Nemo because he might be a reference to Fujin. And because I said that, I really couldn't name him anything else. The wind rises. Because I think, um, out of, out of most of the theories I've made, that's one of the ones I'm most proud of. <laughs> so, yeah. I named Wanderer Galileo because of the song. That, that's appropriate. That's appropriate. Oh, hey, while I have all of you on here, I wonder if I should... Ask a question. How many how many of you guys um know of Marco Meatball? How many of you guys have watched his stuff? Yeah, the opera guy. He does um, musical analyses for Genshin and, and I think some other games too. Um, where he listens to just the music and then he tells you like what kind of information he's getting based on just the music alone. So it's it's like a music analysis, but like if he listens to Skarmish's uh, theme song, for example, he might pick up different differences in tonalities. And um, 
be able to say, oh, you know, this character is going to um, make peace with his past because of this note here and this kind of stuff. Because it's all about liet motifs and stuff, which is like a, a big thing in opera and um, other methods of musical storytelling. Um, so he goes through songs like that, and it's really cool and really fascinating. And if you're at all interested in the music of Genshin, I think you guys should give him a watch because there's all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to ask you guys all a question, actually. Um, and that question was, if you could ask Marco to do a video on anything, what would it be? That's what I want to know. What would it be? What would you ask the meatball of Marco? All right. Mixing his name around did not work all that well. I, I will not do that again. I mean, like, somewhat Genshin or Honkai related. Just to, like, stay on theme. Because otherwise the things get too big. <laughs> I mean, there's too many possibilities if you, if you don't, you know, you get the idea. React to an Ashikai video. Okay, well, that's not... I, we, we, don't, we don't do that here. Quit following me. That's silly. I'm going to ask him to list some of the OSTs of Honkai, not just the big videos, and see what he thinks. Mmm, interesting. Huh. Albedo's theme and Konomiya songs. Oh, that'd be interesting. Ask what he gets from the Fatui motif. Uh, I thought he made a video on that. I seem to recall one. For the, uh, w the Winter Nights Lazaro? Huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, uh, he did a video on that. Just more Honkai or Genshin OSTs or watching... <laughs> Take watching one of my videos off the equation. <laughs> That's not an option. Guys are so biased. I know it's coming eventually, but hang by a thread. Music from the final cutscene in Perilous Trial. Oh. The whole... <laughs> the whole Travail trailer? Oh, these are dead. I'm not following you. I'm controlling you. I am your puppet master, little guy. That's kind of sketchy in light of his uh, origins, isn't it? <laughs> Shakir, do you have a question? I'm all caught up now. You can ask it. You do have to tag me, though, because uh, sometimes it's hard if the comments aren't highlighted. Marco does stream himself playing the game, and a lot of the songs people have already suggested are on his channel. Oh, for those of you who haven't finished uh, Scar's story quest, or his story quest, his interlude quest, um, if you have Nahida, you should take her with you. Because apparently, you can read his mind and he says things. Quit following me. I am so lost. I'm all turned around again. I hate not having cave maps. Huh. Too slow. Oh, right. I can go up. Swan Fury. I forgot. I forgot I could go up. Woo! Here, I got confused with that one voice line Wanderer has about the Doctor where he says most of his segments. Wasn't the deal with Nahida to erase all of his segments? Um, yes. However. Stabilized. 
there there's a lot to suggest that Dottori can just make new ones. I mean, he, he basically said it himself. Well, these are really expensive and they take a lot of time and energy to make. Um, so it doesn't mean like he just can't make more. So it's possible that like he's just currently in the process of making more segments. And it's also possible that he might have some segments that were just dormant, like just not act active. Like maybe they were just like, I don't know. Um, this is like a dragon spine branch, isn't it? Look at it. Which direction is this going anyway? It's going this way. What's this way? Nothing. Well, I mean, this guy, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, right. Um, like, we know he can just make more. And it's possible that he just has, like, some on standby, like, backed up in, like, a cryostasis pod or something. They're just not activated or whatever. I mean, I wouldn't put that past him. It seems very likely. Quit following me. So there may be one or two still around. Jonathan, I don't care. I don't know if you already talked about it, but since you said the Archons were a mix of flame chasers and characters, who do you think is mixed with Murata? I'd say Himiko and Kalpas. That would be so cool. I actually hadn't thought that far ahead. Um, I don't know. Kalpas would be amazing as an option. I would love to have um a Murata Kalpas. They would be so unhinged. It would be, like, ridiculously unhinged. I would just love that. I have no idea where I'm going, by the way. I'm just running around in circles. It's fine. Hey, look, it's one of these things. I was looking for one of these the other day. I finally figured out what that weird griffin statue was. I felt pretty proud of myself. I'm, I'm actually... Well, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Ooh, look what I can do. Look what I can do! Oh yeah. Ding. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's really funny. Um, sorry, I'm just really amused. I love being able to climb to places I'm not supposed to go to. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm, just, I'm, I'm back to running around. It's fine. Back to running around in quarters. It's okay. Uh... You know, she could be, um, I would say Fuhua, but I also think that Fuhua is Zhongli, but that's just me. But Fuhua is also her shirt. It's complicated. Anyway. I don't know. I don't know. But I really do love the idea of Kalpas. Quit following me. That'd be really cool. They're not quite a Persian phoenix. Um, actually, um, uh, what do you what do you call it? Uh, 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 Mesopotamian. Um, you ever seen those weird winged Mesopotamian griffin things? Those are actually a really good match for reasons I can't talk about. Quit following me. Anyway. <laughs> Alcoholic Calpus. Oh my god, what a horrendous. <laughs> oh, that'd be such a horrible combination, but I want it so bad. Um, can you imagine a Marata Calpus XP? Like just chilling with Venti at the bar? Quit following. It'd be amazing. It'd be absolutely I, I want that now. Yep, that's what I want. Whatever thoughts I had before, I want that one now. with my frame rate every now and again. It's just chugging. It's very strange. Uh, I saw I saw one other thing. Um, uh, what do you think Arlequina's true self is like given Wanderer's voice line for her? Um, well, I mean, like, if she portrays herself as being, like, a pretty caring, loyal person, probably the opposite of that. 
I still think her constellation is the hand of glory because it makes sense for her. Like, even if we go really boring with the constellations, like Mihoyo keeps doing, being stupid and boring and not fun at all. I'm going to be salty about the doctor forever. Never pulling him. I don't care how meta he is. He made me too mad. I mean, not going to... It's not a, not a problem for anyone who likes him. I just... He pissed me off. And so now I'm never pulling him ever. Um, unless it's mangatory. If, if it's if it's a mangatory, I'll, I'll pull for that. Um, distractions are abundant today. Uh, I lost my place. Uh, true self. Right, right, right. So I, I still think she's the hand of glory. And the hand of glory it was like a real human hand that gets severed and then turned and like soaked in fat until it becomes basically a human candle hand. And it was the symbol of a traitor. Like, you know how, how in some cultures, like you get your hand chopped off if you're a thief? Well, in other cultures, you get your hand chopped off if you betray somebody and you are made an example of by having your hand turned into a candle. So I think that's possible. I think that is a distinct possibility. I want to see if this will spawn yet. Yes, no, please, please do look up the Hands of Glory. They're, they're fascinating. They are fascinating. Okay, I know I was here earlier, but like these should have respawned now and they haven't. And I'm like a little upset. I know scarabs are like a bitch to farm. And so I'm just going to these like one or two places every couple of days to grab all of the ones that are there. And I will just slowly accumulate enough scarabs over time so that if a character I want ever uses them, I will be ready. And I will not be in pain. I do that with all materials, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, what did you build your wanderer? I need help with him. He's built. What do you have your talent levels on him? Um, I can do a tiny wanderer tutorial. I don't mind that. Okay, listen up, wanderers. There are basically two ways to build this dude. If you are free to play or low spender and you didn't go for his his signature weapon, too slow. chances are good you're probably going to end up using him as a charge attack spammer. If so, I highly recommend Dodoko Tales if you have it. I like, I really, really do. Wind Sith is a really good stat stick. Otherwise, just go with whatever five-star catalyst you have. Um, Eye of Perception is also really decent. You don't really want to go with anything that's like energy recharge. He doesn't need it. His burst is a very small percentage of his kit. Um, that's what I recommend for weapons. Now, when it comes to artifacts, though, here's the thing. Four-piece desert pavilion will be his best basically no matter what you do like yes you can use shimanawa but shimanawa is actually not as good as desert pavilion even with similar substats because 18 percent attack is not nearly as valuable as 15 percent anemo damage which is kind of nuts but the the whole thing about like building characters in genshin um, without going into math, because I know a lot of people don't play games just to do math, and I don't either. <laughs> but, like, it's this, this, the whole method of, like, building characters in this game is just about balance, right? Like, you don't want to have 4,000 attack and 100 crit damage. You want to have maybe 1,800 attack and 200 crit damage, right? Like, you want to be able to balance things out a little bit. I know my ratios are terrible, but I'm running cryo, so I get another 20%. Oh, I was running cryo. I guess I'm not anymore. Um, anyway, you get the idea. It's all about just balancing these stats out as best you can. So if you have a Dodoko Tails, for example, on him, it's got a lot of attack, right? So, like, I actually have more attack with this Dodoko Tails than I do with my um, other... With, with, the, with, the, with the bell. But I lose 40 crit damage... 
And that 40 crit damage is actually a bit more valuable for the most part. But Dodoko also has this really cool thing where it gives you charge attack damage. So you can actually make up for that loss in crit damage with the charge attack damage. By every so often just weaving in one normal attack and then just charge attack spamming over and over and over again. Desert Pavilion will still always be his best in slot. You can run Viridus and Venerer for a piece if you really want to. Um, but honestly, like, even with a pretty jank set, like, okay, so, so, this is with Dodoko, right? Like, I've got 54, 150. This is a pretty terrible artifact set. Look at this clock. This clock is horrendous. <laughs> like, my, my stuff here is not good. I'm mostly running on main stats, and I'm still, like, as you saw before, like, I'm still able to pull off 50k charge attacks on him pretty easily with really terrible substats. And even with these really terrible substats, I'm able to out-damage four Viridescent. Can my team out-damage with that? It, that's a little harder to say, but, like, I think it can. Too slow. So that's basically it. You basically want to get his signature set if you can. Shimanon was a really good second piece if you can get that. If you don't ha want to farm the new domain, that's fine. Um, just know you won't be anywhere near his peak. And then uh, for Viridescent, if you want to run like a taser team, for example. So you can see, I'm doing 27k charge attacks, just Zhongli. Right? With a really, really bad Desert Pavilion set. That's just Zhongli. <laughs> you can you can do a lot with like just a regular Dodoko Tales with him. It's It's deceptive. It's really deceptive. He scales really well when you start to buff him. Um, but anyway. If you have his signature weapon, or you have his C1, or you have C6 Yunjin, or you have um, C2 Gene, I think is what it is. Is that what it is? What, wait, what's what's Gene's thing? What's Gene's thing? I forget. Gene likes me, okay. Yeah, C2 Gene. If you have C2 Gene, C6 Yunjin, um, his signature weapon, Four Piece Desert Pavilion, or his constellation one if you have any combination of two of those things you want a normal attack instead which means you don't really want to run something like dodoko tales you'll be better off with something like eye of perception or lost prayers or skyward atlas they're all pretty comparable honestly like i haven't noticed too much of a difference between any of them to like say oh absolutely pick this weapon over another one just don't pick an em weapon don't pick a don't pick a uh, energy recharge weapon um don't pick an HP weapon, obviously, and you'll be fine. He's actually really easy. I, I, I keep saying this, but like, honestly, he's he's a free-to-play friendly Shao. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone say this, but that's honest to God what he is. Anyway. I have a C6 to be fair. Okay, but oh, l listen, listen. Here's the thing about his C6, all right? His C6 does basically a couple of things. None of them are particularly, like, amazing. This one right here makes him more of a normal attacker. You don't need his C1. You can just use a C6 Yunjin, a C2 Jean, um, or his signature weapon, or four-piece Desert Pavilion, or any combination of two thereof, right? You don't, you don't need... All these other things. His C2 burst, boosts his burst damage. His burst damage is a very, very, very small part of his total damage. Unless you're, like, specifically running him for big numbers. Because you, you can do that. I've, I've gotten... My cap is 80k per tick. Um, with his burst. But, like, you have to set it up specifically to do that. Other than that, you're usually getting anywhere from 20 to 50k. Right? But like in, in the grand scheme of things, you're not doing a whole lot, like a whole lot with that. Same with the C3. C4, this actually isn't all that helpful because only two of these um, things that you get from his Ascension 4 buff his damage. 
The other ones just buff his duration in the air, and the other one buffs his energy recharge, which also isn't necessary. So this is only a buff for taser comps. That's it. Um, this increases his skill, which, by the way, doesn't matter as much as you think it does. The actual scaling of his skill drops off pretty fast after, like, talent level 7. You want to level his normals way more than his skill, and you can't boost normals through constellations. So again, none of this is helping me. The only thing that's helping me with my normal attack span is this. And this doesn't actually deal more damage. What it's doing is giving me more instances of damage. So like when you see me auto attacking and it's looking like it's doing like 10 hits at a time, that's because it's giving me extra hits. It's not actually changing my Wanderer's damage per hit, right? It's giving me 40% more damage from a secondary hit. So keep that in mind. It's not as big of a difference as you'd think it is. It's really not. It's really not. His constellations are really subpar. Like, the constellation 6 is only good if you boost his attack speed by a considerable amount. So, like, I'm getting 10% from his C1. I'm getting, like... 10% from his signature, and then I think it's 10% from... Uh, yeah, so I'm getting 30% attack speed for him. So, like, that's what makes it look really fast. And then he's getting a lot of additional hits. So you see, like, I get a bunch of different hits there. You see that? But it doesn't do anything for my actual damage numbers. It just gives me more instances of damage, and it only does it on my normal attack. So if I do charge attack spam with a C6 Wanderer, it is the same amount of damage as you will get from a C0. Just keep that in mind. That's why I said, like, his... his uh, He's actually pretty flexible and pretty easy to build for that. C2 does make his burst feel more satisfying if you get the timing right. The problem with his, his C2 is it only works when you're in this state right here. You see that? So the longer this goes on, the more my damage increases from my burst. The problem is, is if you get hit or interrupted or you don't miss, hit the timing on your skill, you won't get maximum damage out of his burst. So the amount that you get from that constellation is really dependent on your skill level more than anything else. And again, his burst really isn't a very big part of his damage anyway, so it's not really worth all that much, which is why so many theory crafters will tell you to just um, use Shimanawa with him because he doesn't actually need his burst. That part is true. I find his burst to be quite satisfying. Um, it definitely has moments which are really fun. And it can be helpful because it's a lot of AoE damage and it can also bust shields, which is also kind of fun. But, 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 is it necessary? No. Doesn't make that much of a difference. Really doesn't. Because, like, if I'm in Abyss and I'm fighting those freaking husks, right, and they, they attack me, like, towards the end of my skill duration... I can't use my my burst like that extra bonus for my c2 i'm not getting that because if i'm up in the air like this and i'm down like this like i accidentally dashed or something and i use my burst right now i will have my hat on when i use the burst which means that i won't actually get the boost from my c2 so i don't like it it's it's not the c6 is really like the one c4 basically is just a taser buff C1 is the one that matters the most, I think, and C6 is the one that gives you the biggest, like, overall, like, I would say, like, a matchup. I would call it a, I would call it a matchup damage. Because it gives you so many additional hits. Like that. It just doesn't actually increase your, your individual number damage, like your individual... It's just additional hits, that's all. Anyway, sorry, that was, that was... Oh, the burst cutscene is super satisfying and stuff. Just, like, never feel like you have to pull for constellations. Like, I did it for Skarmush because I absolutely adore him, right? 
Like, that's the one reason. Other than that, I probably would have gone for C1 and stopped. C1 is the one constellation um, that matters most. So don't don't be fooled when I say like his constellations are not like Yalons, okay? They they're not like you know, you get Yalon C6 and like, okay, now you just delete everything in the game like instantly. That's that's not how he works. Like this damage is not at all impressive at a C6, right? You take a Yelon and you do something like that and she's going to delete everything. But I think that's fine because he's in an emo unit and he's supposed to be a driver. It's okay. Anyway. I wouldn't enjoy the game if everything died instantly anyway. Yeah, honestly, like they really need to add another world level. I would love a world level where, like, they would start putting um, bigger, stronger enemies, more levels, all that kind of stuff, increased mobs. Like, instead of just having two or three of these guys right here, have, like, a dozen of them. It'd be really cool if they did that with a new world level. Yeah, Yalon C6 is the one for the five nukes. Like, Yalon's constant. Like, I, I legitimately think Yalon has some of the best constellations in the game. Like, period. If ever you're someone who just struggles with Abyss and, like, you still want to clear it on 36 stars and you're willing to, like, save up for constellations and stuff, the one unit I would tell you to C6 is Yalon. <laughs> Wait for a five-star Anemo support in the future. Yeah, you know what? If they make, like, a, an Anemo Shenha, um, I would be open to that. Oops. This is the problem with playing on controller. <laughs> Let's move. Solidify. The wind rises. Shouldn't get careless. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, it's a problem with laying on controller. Sometimes my button holds don't register. MSNX, MSNX17. I do not know how to pronounce that phonetically. I am so sorry. Um, but thank you for the super chat. And have a wonderful evening to you as well. Thanks for hanging out with me. I was really bored. Like, really bored. Like, very bored. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to... Have some cool peeps to hang out with. But yeah. Just checking my C0 Yaelon. Yeah, damn, her cons are bust. They really are. Now Everyone talks about Raiden C2. Like, legit, look at any of Yaelon's cons. To force a conversation just to occupy silence. Wait, wait, where is this guy running to? Hi. What are you doing? Pew! Gather. Just for funsies. Where do you think you're going? Oh, might help if I use my skill, huh? <laughs> oh, I already ran out of Yunjin's thing. Um, I have like a Caesar or Yunjin or something. Something kinda. I think. Oh no, I have C2. Uh, yeah, I have C2. I would really love her C6, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Fearmonger, sorry to bother. How long does it usually take for the Discord server to show up in the connections tab after connecting my channel? Oh, uh, it can take anywhere from like an hour to 12 hours. Um, it really varies. I don't really understand like what the synchronization rate is, but after this stream, I will go and manually sync it. So if you were, um, if you if you guys connect your your accounts to the Discord before the end of this stream, which should be like in the next like 
15, 20 minutes or so. Um, then, uh, then I'll, then you'll be synced automatically by me. Because it's a right pain in the ass. Like, I, I can't quite figure out why it does that. Fury. I don't understand. Discord's a silly billy. Do I plan on pulling for all Haytham? Listen, I am so torn. Because, like, I really want Yelan for, like, combat mechanics and also world traversal because, like, alternating between her and Skara sounds so fun. Um, and also because, like, I, I just... I don't have... I really don't have that many supports. Like, good supports. Like, I have some... I don't really have that many. Like, I don't have much variety. And I've only realized that recently. Um, and she would be, like, the best addition to my account. And 3.4 is the perfect time for her to rerun. Yeah. And I'll hate them as a unit I probably don't need. Even though I really like him. And it's becoming problematic. So I'm... I'm... You are not I'm not sure. Ow. Not sure. He can't E in mid-air. No, no, he can't. That's one sad thing. I wish he could. That'd be really cool, but it also would probably be kind of busted. Following me. <laughs> to, to be fair, <laughs> that'd be kind of busted. Yeah. That's the thing, though. Like, a character I need versus a character I want, they're, they're kind of overlapping at this point. Because, like, I like Yelan. I didn't pull for her when she um, was first here because, like, I was so annoyed at the sheer amount of armpit memes on Twitter and everywhere else. And I was just like, I am not pulling for this on principle. But now that the armpit memes have calmed down, um, I feel better. <laughs> I realize that that's a stupid reason not to pull a character, but whatever. Um, it just annoyed me. Uh, but I, I do really like her, and I really want to use her. She looks so fun and, like, just useful. Whereas Al Haytham, I really love his character, but I am not sure I need him. And I'm not sure I really want to play how he plays. So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Following orders. But yeah, no, you can say whether or not you like his gameplay or you think it looks fun or whatever, but like, let's not actually go over what his kit is or like compare it to anyone else or anything. I guess you could, you could say, like, oh, I think his kit is as fun as so-and-so, but, like, I wouldn't compare his kit to anyone. Does that make sense? Like, I recognize that a lot of people look at leaks, but I also recognize that a lot of people don't want to be exposed to leaks without their own consent. Like, if they're going to consume leaks, they want to do it on their own terms. Um, I understand both of those perspectives, so I just kind of want to be respectful of everyone involved. Whoops. Actually, it wasn't what I meant to do. Well, it's gone forever. I kind of wish Farazan had tights. Sometimes I just like to do this. She doesn't do a lot of damage, but she's fun. We'll see about that. Your use of Alhatham will depend on his teams, yeah. I mean, he's basically got... 
three options, right? He can basically run quick, uh, quicken, hyper bloom, or burgeon. Just by nature of being dendro. <laughs> that is not a leak. That's just element based. I think it's his role that will matter more. Something I don't particularly like is that most of the Sumeru characters so far have been really reliant on Nahida in order to bring out their full potential. And it would feel really weird if he's the same because he is Dendro. You know what I mean? I would feel super weird. What do you want? I don't know who you are. I don't I do not accept world joins from people I don't recognize. I don't accept friend requests from people I don't recognize either, because I, I, I get a lot. I, I can't... I can't go through all of them. That just... yeah. Anyway... The Radish Gaming of Sumero. Yeah. I mean, like, it kind of sucks, but... Because, like, when it comes to Liwa... See, none of that was my C6. Except maybe a little attack speed, but you can get that elsewhere. Um, when it came to Liwei, like, none of those characters required Zhongli, you know? When it came to Mondstadt, none of the characters required Venti. So it annoys me that, like, in Sumeru... In Sumeru, like, there are just characters that require... Rise. Oops. That require Nahida. It's just so strange. Break a leg. Why I like collecting treasure, cause my name is Paimon. Zhao doesn't require Zhongli though. Zhao just needs a shield. It doesn't have to be Zhongli. The thing is with Nikita is like, there are basically no good alternatives for her. Like, can, can you really compare Kale and the Traveler to Nikita? in terms of utility. Like, you, you really can't. You, you can't do, like, dendro melt comps with Kale. You know what I mean? And Dendro Traveler doesn't really apply enough Dendro to, like, always keep up 100% uptime on Hyper Boom and Burgeon teams. And Burgeon teams are really hard to do with uh, Dendro Traveler anyway, because his flower friggin' explodes if you touch it with Pyro. Quit following me. So my name is Kiana? What? Huh. Oh, because I said I was, my, I was Paimon? Yeah, well, I guess that's fair enough. That's fair enough. The heat is boss busted for off-field Dendro app. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And like a lot of Quicken teams and Bloom teams and stuff like that, they need a lot of Dendro application. And because of Kale's really terrible ICD, like her unique ICD, she's just not up to the challenge. And Dendro Traveler is really energy hungry. And I've had a very difficult time using them comfortably. And then our other Dendro is Tignari, and Tignari is a DPS, so he doesn't even count. Search for it. Uh, only explodes if you hit it with Pyro first. I just use Hydro first and then apply the Pyro. Yeah, but I use Ayato, and that makes it really hard unless I happen to have my burst up, and the burst actually hits the flower before I cast Toma.
DPS, you say. You're not going to tell me that you use Tignari as a support, are you? You're not, you're not, you're not actually going to tell me that, are you? Have I been playing the PCG? Yeah, I have. I have, I have. I'm, I'm not that far. Um, not that far. C4 Tignari is a support. C4 Tignari, if you have a C4 Tignari at this point, either you really love him and you pulled for him, or you've gotten insanely lucky with the pity breaks. Because, uh, I don't even have one Tignari. <laughs> we are too quick for Ashy to keep up with since she's playing at the same time. Well, I mean, like, I'm also in, like, a 25-second delay, I think. Something like that. I am only this many. I mean, I I've played some. I've played some. Uh, let's see. I have two letters. Why don't you guys decide who I should invite? I invited Xingqiu, but I haven't fought him yet. We're allowed in the cat's tail? What? Th this is where TCG happens! Yoimiya. Everyone says Yoimiya. Okay, we'll invite Yoimiya. Okay. Oh my god, there's so many things. Let's get this party started. I'm not gonna fight her right now, because I'm 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 gonna go to bed. <laughs> but I'll invite her and she'll be my next card. She'll be the next card I get. Um and then who else should I invite? I'm gonna do Razor, Diona, Chongyun, Noel, Ningguang, Jean, Bennett, Ayaka, Kale, and Barbara. I can't do Sino yet, even though I'm I really wanna. Ayaka Ganyu. I have Ganyu. That sounds so weird to say because I don't actually have a real Ganyu, but I have the Ganyu card. I've done that one. Ningguang, Noel, Noel, Mona. I have Mona. These are the ones I have, okay? I've, I've gotten Ganyu, Kaya, Mona, Diluc, Changling, Fischl, Kaching, Sucrose, and, uh, and then I unlock these two. Oceanid I do have. Ningguang, Noel, Noel, Noel. Okay, everyone wants Noel. We'll do that. Noel it is! Uh, Sarapex! Weird lore question. Do you think A completely forgot Scaramouche, or does she still remember the nameless puppet she left? Same with Mona. Couldn't she read Wanderer and find out his past? I mean... Yes. This is the thing, though. So, since Scara actually told the Traveler to... Tell the heirs of the Raiden Gokuden, like, the stuff that he did. It implies that he still did those things, right? Like, history actually hasn't changed. It's just that no one remembers who was involved. So, I think... A would remember that she created some puppets. But she probably wouldn't remember that one of them woke up. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. That would make the most sense to me. This looks so comfy. How come I can't sit on it? Let me sit on this chair. It's so, so comfy. I want this. It's so good. My dogs could sit there with me. It'd be so comfy. Man. Yeah, her voice line about Kuni. Well, Kuni Kazushi has been deleted. Kabuki Mono has been deleted. But, like, the original puppet that he was that was nameless was not deleted. So, like... You know. 
Yeah, she probably remembers that she made a few prototypes and that they didn't work out, but she probably just doesn't remember that this one woke up. Do we think the Jester summoned the Abyss Twin? I don't think the Jester summoned the Abyss Twin. I do think that Conria might have summoned the Abyss Twin. I get the feeling that the Jester might have been opposed to it. That's kind of the feeling I get. The voice at the end of the quest. I've already talked about that earlier in stream, so I'm, I'm not going to do it again. Because we're wrapping up here, and that was a long explanation. <laughs> um, I don't think it was Istaroth, though. It doesn't really make much sense if it is. Do you think there'll be a new sixth harbinger? No, I don't. I think the harbingers are just all going to slowly disappear one by one until there's none left. How long ago did you talk about I want to go back and listen? Oh, I don't know. How long have I been streaming? That's a really good question. <laughs> Uh, the TLDR on the on the voice at the end of the quest thing, though, is I don't think it's Istaroth. I actually think it's Mona's master. Um... That's my that's my current uh, most believable theory to me, anyway. Um, but for the explanation, you can kind of like scroll back in the chat. Well, you'll find it somewhere, probably, maybe. I I I, I don't know. Some of you are crazy enough to watch these back as vods. <laughs> some of you are. I don't know why, but some of you are. I actually kind of want to go to Partis Di. Hang on. Does Aloy count as one of the Descenders? Probably not. Have I talked about the connection between Nahida writing a fairy tale and the Abyss Mage stealing the Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies? Um, kind of, but not, like, that specifically. Um, we did talk about how Nahida, Zhongli, and Venti each have their own ways of preserving history. And that might be one of their primary concerns as Archons. That we did talk about. Woohoo! Cardis DI is so handy. I want to go say hi to Kartaka. He's my favorite little robo-buddy. Kartaka! Wait, where is he? Where is he? Oh no, is he gone now? Did Twiggy take him? Oh no, there he is. He's still here. Hi, little dude. Hello, my favorite little dude. Hi. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, I can't step on him. I love this little dude. He's the best crab ever. He's a good little dude. He's a good little dude. You hear that? You are a good little dude. Sorry. Um. Before you win stream, can you show us your Scara build? I got him recently, but I don't know how to build him. I'm still new to the game. Uh, are you in Sumeru yet? <laughs> Use my burst to step. <laughs> um, I, I did talk about how to build him earlier. Um, TLDR, if you're free to play and you only have a C0 scar and you didn't pull for his weapon, um, you probably don't have Dodoko Tails. So your next best option is probably going to be Eye of Perception or Widsith, depending on um, what you have access to. Or any five-star catalyst. You could also... I don't have it crafted right now, but... Um, if you've been through Inazuma and you've gone and gotten all of the... Um, all of the uh, prototype things and you have a couple of billets hanging around 
you can craft. Oh, wait, where am I going? I'm, I want to go to the blacksmith. You could craft, um. You could craft the Hakushin ring right here. It is an energy recharge catalyst, um, but because of the damage bonus that it gives for Electro, you can actually use it in Taser pretty easily. Um, Taser is usually a pretty easy thing to play for um, Anemo catalyst units, so that's pretty good. Um, Mappa Mare is also a good option if you can craft anything, um, but those would be my two my two recommendations um, for craftables, and then for non-craftables for like summoning weapons, like go for Eye of Perception or um, the... Uh, with Sith. Or if you get Battle Pass, get a Solar Pearl. That's also a good one. Um, yeah. Other than that, just build an attack and emo crit until you can get a Desert Pavilion set. If you decide to, 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 to get that. It's worth it if you want to run him as a primary DPS. It's totally worth it. If you don't always want to run him as like a primary DPS, you can use four of your Descent or two Glad, two Shimanamo or whatever. Like two any attack percent, anemo damage sets, whatever you want to do there. He's actually pretty easy to build, all things considered. But yeah, no, I did, I did like a full thing a little bit while ago that you can go look at. This is the wrong way. Where am I going? I'm wandering in circles. What else is new? Very common. Very common for me. Hairdresser? I thought there was only one of these in Port Ormos. Huh. Before the Wanderer received his vision, what do you think his fighting style might have been like? Catalyst like Senora? Yeah, I think he was probably um, using an Electro Delusion um, as a catalyst still. But, that that said, he does have a lot of experience with swords. And we do know, because of his Husk of Opulent Dream set, that he once wielded a sword um, in combat. So, it's quite possible that he was at one point also a sword wielder. Or he can also use a sword, but prefers a catalyst. Quit following me. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Too slow. Very Makoto of him, yeah. Honestly, the theory that he's actually based on Makoto or that he has Makoto in him is so good. Like it's it's actually a really solid theory. Very plausible. Very plausible. Thoughts on the theory that Venti summoned the twins based on the anniversary wings? Um, I mean, someone summoned the twins. Venti could have. One's demise, first of all. Hi, this is my first chat. My friend keeps talking about Puccinella and his hat with the Hillitrell mask thingy. Any ideas why he has it on him? Uh, this is such a hard thing to explain. Um, there's a really good theory on Reddit that I recommend you search for. Um about Puccinella, and basically it's talking about how he might actually be based on a Slavic, for lack of a better term, are you familiar with Harry Potter at all and you know about house elves? Because like, Slavic mythology has a kind of similar entity, and it's not like a very good comparison, but like it's the best one I can think of. So... Yeah. If you, if you look in on that, um, you'll see a lot more symbolism in his hat, and it really makes sense, and I am, I am really all for that theory. That theory makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but I would look it up on Reddit. Um, it, it's probably going to be one of the top results. If you just type in Puccinello Reddit um, Genshin, you'll probably get it right away. I would be surprised if characters don't get alternate elements and skins at some point. 
I will be very surprised. Yeah, the Domovoy thing. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I can never remember it. I keep thinking it's doorknob, and that's not right. <laughs> my, 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 my Russian's very bad. Anyway. Um, yeah, similar to Honkai system, something like that, yeah. Like, where they're a completely different unit, but, like, you could... You can only have one of them in your team at a time. So it's, like, still, like, somewhat canonical that there's only one of them. You just two forms. Too slow. I saw someone on TikTok actually animate um, the... Uh, the old Scaramouche design. Um, the Fatui design, but with his playable animations and then they just recolored his uh his his whatchamacallit's the um wind blades purple and it looks so cool i would have been equally happy with that honestly um i like both of them honestly like the only thing i don't really like about wanderer so much is like his i think i think his hat um in his fatui form was infinitely better but the rest of him i actually like the wanderer better I think this hat is a little too contrast, too too heavily contrasted. Buccinello is like the Godfather from the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you come here on the day of my daughter's wedding. Quit following me. Oh God, I shouldn't have done that. Will we ever learn the identity of KK? Listen, KK is just Kevin. Huh, Kevin slow. Caslana, that's who it is. Huh, too slow. Huh. It was never it was never anything more complicated. It's it's always been Kevin. Uh I remember seeing this theory on Reddit about the Harbinger's constellation order. Being the order we fight them. Since we've only fought three, do you think we'll see both Arlequino and Demslet? Um, if we're right, though, that would mean we'd be fighting uh, Arlequino next, and then we'd be fighting um, is it Columbina and then I think it's Columbina right after that, and then it's Capitano. Um, which would kind of make sense because if you put number three with number ten and had them both show up at the same time, that would be one way to make number ten way more threatening than number six. Scar's line about Columbine is actually quite interesting. I think I think it's funny that um, Child won't fight Columbina. The I'll fight anyone if you let me. Child will not fight Columbina. <laughs> but Skarmouche is like, yeah, frick, I'll take her, but you shouldn't. I think that's funny. He didn't say he could beat her, by the way. He just said he'd take her. <laughs> this is an important discrepancy. Um... Yeah, the hat feels imbalanced. It, it just it's just too much contrast. I feel like they should have made it more light blue than than the dark blue. I think that would have been better. Um But that's honestly my only critique of his outfit. I like the rest of it. The rest of it's fine. Uh have I got any ideas what the loom of fate can imply in the new quest? I believe it could imply reviving Conria via Ermansol. Um I have a video for you to watch. I'll put it that way. Too slow. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, I tend to not make smaller theories. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a couple more questions and then I'm gonna um give you a TCG theory before I go. Um and we'll call it a night. Um but the the thing the thing is is like a lot of the theories that I've made are very You think I've got a sharp tongue? I just how to put it. it uh so not high bad. level. That's not the right term. Maybe it's um. Uh, 
more macro, right? Like like big big picture, grand scale kinds of things. That tends to be more of um, what the majority of my theories are. Um, and they're just based on events that have happened currently in the game uh, or whatever was active. So like if you see a video that's a little out of date but still looks like it might be an interesting topic, even though it says like version 2.7, it might still actually be quite relevant. Um, this is going to sound like I'm really tooting my own horn, like a lot. <laughs> I, I realize that. Um, there aren't that many of those big picture theories so far that I've been that far off base with. Like a lot of them are still incredibly relevant and still quite accurate, even if some of the details are a little bit off um, due to like just lack of information. Um, like the overall, like the, they're still... They haven't been disproven. And in fact, a lot of them have been supported even more in recent times. So so it's it's definitely worth going back and looking at those, um, if only to see if you can find any discrepancies where um, it'll be the case that they are no longer true. You know what I mean? Highly recommend it. There's a bunch on Celestial Nails. Um, there's a couple on, like, I've got one on glass blowing of all things. You'll be kind of surprised, I think. There's a few, th there's a few in there um, specifically about the Loom of Fate, which is why I'm not necessarily answering it right now. <laughs> Just because I've already put my thoughts into video format, and so now it's out of my head until I need it again. Um. Do you think Sindrone hates Child because he destroyed the Ruin Guard factory in his story quest? It wasn't Sandrone's factory, it was Dottori's. So, probably not. Um, actually wanted to ask, are there any videos of yours that you really want to redo touch up on due to new info? Um... No. I'll, I'll say this. I haven't had any theories where I've looked back and I've been, been like, oh, I was half right, but then like not really, or I missed the mark or something like that. Usually like if I'm wrong, I'm like extremely wrong. Like I'm so far off, like it's laughable, right? Like it's crack at that point. And then other times I'm pretty close but maybe I got some details wrong because I was, um, you know, lacking information because we get more information every day. So, and again, that sounds like I'm really tooting my own horn. I promise I'm not. It's not what I'm doing. Um, it's just, I'm very, I'm very polar in my theories. Very polar. I, I don't do nearly enough small things that I think, like, micro things that I think, um, I can be off by, like, a marginal amount all that often. Like, I, I, like, for example, my crackiest theory is easily, like, my Capitano is Minogius theory, right? Like, that one I go into knowing it's got, like, a 10% chance of being true at best, right? And so I don't ever really want to redo it because I always knew it was improbable going in. Like, it's just labeled as crack anyway, so there's not really any point in trying to make it better. Um, I think the only videos I would ever want to redo are Harbinger videos, like rankings and stuff. But the rankings annoy me so much now that I'm just tired and I don't want to do it anymore. I'm also just tired of people in comments saying, Oh, Detori's number two. And I'm like, did you see the date this was posted? And then I lose my motivation for wanting to redo it. I I did I did try to redo Unreconciled the Unreconciled Stars one, but the problem was is that most of that theory was like gross extrapolation. And it was still accurate, even though I got, you know, some details wrong and some rationality wrong. But, like, when I went back to try to, like, make a proper theory of it, I realized that it was just... 
It could be summarized in like, hey, guess what? The sky is a lie. Here's why. And we had so much more information that's factual now that it's like almost not something I could make a theory video on anymore. So that that's that's the other challenge. Um, things that get confirmed or denied is just kind of there's no point in revisiting a theory at that point. Just make a new one. That was a really long and complicated way of saying no. <laughs> uh, anyway. I never said I wasn't long winded. I am known for being long winded. Re, thanks for the super chat. Did anyone else name Skaramush Koto short for Makoto and got the idea from you? <laughs> Aw, that's cute. I don't think I've seen anyone name him Koto. I've seen I've seen a couple of people name him like full on Makoto though. Or Mako. I've seen I've seen a couple of Makos. That I have seen. Um you can do a mini theory series, just a video of all your little theories that don't amount to much with the bigger picture. Yeah, that's the problem, though, is, like, everything's so interconnected that, like, when I do little theories, Quit following me. I don't know. A, they're not as satisfying. And even though a theory is short, like, they still take a lot of work to research and write and then record and then edit and everything else. Like, the, the amount of effort I save just by making them shorter, it's yeah. not worth it most of the time like worth the effort not when i can just share them on stream or on twitter or on like community posts and that kind of stuff like it, it's just i don't know i don't know um right so i wanted to share a tcg thing with you guys because I'm, I'm gonna head off here because it's 11 30 it's time it's time for me to go um but I want to share one TCG theory with you. How many people here know of a guy named Parsifal? Probably not that many of you. I want to show you something. Oh, I think I have to do this in the, um, I have to do this in here. Oh, wait, no, I don't. You know, the easier way to do this is just to go into the archive. Oh, I, I hate going in through the other menu. I don't know why I do it. Um, I want to show you something cool. This is the heart of depth set. Okay. This is, the, oh, the, oh, why did it do that? Stop it. No, not you, Lily. Um, okay. So. So, so. This, I'm pretty sure it's this one. If I remember correctly. Um. Was it the skipper? Hang on, I think I have to look something up real quick. I have to look something up really quick. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I'm just dumb. It's fine. I wanna look something up super quickly. Oh, that one. Cause this guy is freaking everywhere. Yeah, okay, that's right. He is, he is, he is. Okay. Right, he's the chief mate. That's what it is. Um, I always forget. I always forget. Um, okay, so, so, in this set, which is, oh, stop. <laughs> I hate these things. I keep switching between left top and left bottom, and it's so annoying. Um, so this set, this set, Heart of Depth. Um, I just, I, I can't win. I can't, I just keep hitting the wrong button. This is so aggravating. Okay. All right, this thing, chief mate, chief mate, chief mate. The chief mate here in this set is actually Parsifal. Parsifal has a lot of artifact set lore <laughs> and a lot of weapon lore. And like, he's just mentioned fricking everywhere. And something that I've noticed outside of that artifact set 
is that, um, where is it? Um, don't ask questions. If you've noticed, these artifact sets seem to resemble a certain characters that we have encountered before. Yes? Like this is obviously Zhongli. This is obviously Senora. They are matching their set. And we know Archaic Petra is about Zhongli. We know that Crimson Witch is about Senora. Like none of that is new, right? But then you see this one. And the thing about this one is that this here should be Parsifal, right? But it looks a hell of a lot like Child. Don't you think? Like, I know, I know it's pretty, like, small. But it kind of looks like Child. And, and... That artifact set is about a whale. <laughs> so I was thinking, along with a bunch of other people in Discord, by the way, um, this was not just a me thought. It was just, it was a theory that was co-developed by several people in Discord um, that I am sharing with all of you. Um, but like, I'm thinking he might actually be a descendant of Parsifal. If not a reincarnation, depending on how this game functions. <laughs> Which would be... Hysterical! For so many reasons! And, okay, so the, the reason why we, we got on this trail is I'm pretty sure Child does not use Liwa talent books. Think about that for a second. The first place we meet Child... ...is in Liwa, right? The first place we meet Kazua is in Liwe, but Kazua is from Inazuma. So Kazua uses Liwe talent books because he kind of bridges the gap between Liwe and Inazuma. Whereas Wanderer here bridges the gap between Inazuma and Sumeru, right? So it makes sense that he would use Sumeru talent books. Child... Even though the place we meet him is in Liwe, he does not use Liwe talent books. He uses Mondstadt talent books. And Parsifal was from Mondstadt. Which would mean that Child should bridge the gap between Mondstadt and Shnaznaya. Just to see the sun again. How childish. Which would be funny. Anyway, that was my, uh, my one TCG theory that I wanted to share before I head off. Um, you lucky 700 and so people who are here, <laughs> you get a little random bonus theory. There's my mini theory that I'll never put into shorts or anything else because it's so much effort to do it and I just don't want to. I, I can't be, I can't be asked, you guys. It's so much work. I'd rather put my energy into making, um, you know, proper theories. Not that small theories aren't proper. It's just that, like, if I'm going to put the effort forth, I'm going to make something big. It's kind of like, why make a, a microwave mug cake when I could make an actual cake? You know what I mean? It's it's like that. Like, there's nothing wrong with a mug cake. I just would rather have an actual cake. <laughs> you get the idea. What if Toma and Child are long-lost cousins that has merit? It actually does now. It, it could. It could. It very well could. Isn't Toma also from Mondstadt, though? Yeah, but he uses Inazuma talent books because he bridges the gap between Mondstadt and Inazuma. Uh, Shakir, if you didn't end up making your channel about theories in Genshin, what would you have considered and said and why? Um, well, originally this channel was for me posting my, uh, my, my arena and abyss... or not abyss, um, ether raids clears for Fire Emblem Heroes that I was just doing for funsies so I could share. Um, and then Genshin kind of accidentally took off. I, I think, I think, um, what I'm going to do in the future though, um, I am really interested in Star Rail. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll just, I'll play it. And if I do play it, 
I don't know that I'll make theories for it, but what I will do is make lore, um, lore recap videos and stuff for it. Um, so I, I may end up just doing like general Hoyoverse um, stuff because it's pretty focused. It's easy for people to know what they're getting. Um, and if I end up spinning off and doing anything else, I'll probably end up making a whole new channel if I last that long. <laughs> we'll see. Who bridges the gap between Mondstadt and Liwa? Uh, oh, I had an answer for this and I completely forgot. Um, I would say Amber, but probably not. Dunno. Maybe there isn't one yet. I forget. Shangling. Why is everyone saying Shangling? Shangling doesn't use Mondstadt talent books, does she? Me. What Leela character uses Mondstadt talent books? Probably none of them. But like Amber is half Leeway and she uses Mondstadt talent books, so she could count. Mona would bridge the gap potentially between Fontaine and Mondstadt. Uses Mondstadt talent books. Um, Zhao bridges the gap between Sumeru and Liwei, potentially. Um, I don't think any of these do. I guess it wouldn't really make sense for that because, like, Liwei and, and, um... Monstat were released at the same time, so they wouldn't have had a need to do that. Still. Uh, am I ever thinking of going into Honkai Impact Fert or just Honkai Star Rail? Just Star Rail. Yeah, just Star Rail. Oh, right. She's a quarter Liwa. Her grandpa is Liwa, not her father. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. She She's part Liwa. I'll just leave it there. Um... Wait, does it have to only be five stars? No, not really. It's just more likely to be five stars due to the nature of the game. Hi, just curious, you edit your own videos. The quality of your videos is just insane. Um, you can tell when I don't edit my own videos. There's, um, I do have an editor, TXR. He helps me edit an additional video, basically one per patch or one per month. It depends. Um... You can definitely tell when, when he's edited one because it's edited with such precision and there's so many, like, really neat little jokes and references and stuff in there. Usually, um, there will be, like, character puppets and stuff kind of moving around the screen and whatnot. Um, he does a really phenomenal job. He just did the, the Beginner's Guide to Inazuma. Um, that was the last one that he did for me. Um, but there are a lot of... Most of the videos on the channel I will do um, cause it is, it is faster for me to do them because my editing is much simpler and sometimes for deep dives, like for the, this three part series I'm doing right now, um, it, it's one of those series that's really hard for me to, to hand off to somebody. Um, but others are, are much easier. So I'll, I'll have him help me with that. So the answer to that is yes and what do you mean bridges the gap? Like, they have two nationalities. Like, Skarmouche actually has three nationalities. Do you know that? He's a Conrian puppet. I don't know if you guys know this, but his, his, uh, his robotics, he's crafted using Conrian technology and Irminsel wood. Um, so there's number one. And then he's created by an Inazuma Archon, so he has Inazuma heritage. And then he has Sumeru nationality because he's now a Sumeru unit, right? And the fun part is, is his weapon, Tule Tula, this one. Um, the city of Tule Tula was actually called like the city of three cultures. Or three nations, I forget which. So it's actually really fitting for him. Because he has three. Anyway, 
Just a thought, but is there any chance that the goddess of flowers was a Celia that fell in love with uh, Deshert wasn't a human, but I didn't care. Maybe. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, again, the answer is yesn't, and my other answer is please wait till part three comes out. I promise we'll talk about her. I'm gonna I'm gonna head off though. Doesn't Wanderer belong to no nation? No, he's got a Sumeru vision. He belongs to Sumeru. He has Conrian origins. Inazuma Heritage, and Sumeru Nationality. So three. Three bouncy, 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 He's bouncy. Why ascend? I descend. We're not going to go into Vision Lord tonight. I'm, I'm going to sign off. Like, you'll, you'll have to ask me another time. Yeah, you'll have to ask me another time. We, we just don't have time for it today. Um, so I got two videos coming up. I guess I'll tell you this before I go. Um, it's, ob it's part three of this three-part series I'm working on. Um, we'll be talking about the Goddess of Flowers, Seelies, and, and a lot of desert lore. Um, I, I am debating putting it off until 3.4, but it, it might not be a good idea. It might be just a good idea to put it out now. Um, to see how close I am when that does come out. We can do like a, like a post 3.4 analysis. Um, and then the other one I'm doing is a complete analysis on this guy. Okay. We're doing a complete analysis on this guy. So, yep. Those are the next two videos. After that, we'll see what happens. Um, and I may have a couple of surprises in store for you guys that you're really going to like. I just tell Might not come out until so January, but we'll see. Maybe that's their anyway, thank you guys all for showing up. I really appreciate hanging out with me. I was super bored. You guys kept me entertained, and I hope I kept you entertained on this rather dull Friday evening. Good night, everybody. Take care. And don't you forget to do the Fandango.